Well, Matt, welcome to Dwight Perry Stadium. It is the fourth sellout in about four decades, and the orange-clad Falcon fans got their thunder sticks ready. They've been challenged by Coach Greg Brandon to make things very loud and very uncomfortable for Northern Illinois, which arrives here as one of four unbeatens, ranked number 10 in the BCS. The Huskies spoiled the Falcons' season a year ago. Bowling Green intent on payback. We'll come back to set the scene for you from Bowling Green right after this. A big rowdy crowd here at Bowling Green's Dwight Perry Stadium. Supremacy for now anyway, and the Mac West Division at stake. Bowling Green against Northern Illinois. You know, this conference has been very strong in the season so far. They've knocked off some big name opponents. You know, Maryland and Alabama in the case of Northern. Purdue beaten by Bowling Green. But they don't care about BCS or national recognition this afternoon. The players all say winning the division, getting to the championship game of the Mac, getting to a bowl game. That's all that counts right now. Well, you know, I coach in this conference for nine ball games, and I tell you what I was impressed with. There are a lot of hard nosed Luke Collar, knock your head off kind of football players. But I think the most important thing that has changed since I coached in this conference, Kirk, is they now got some quarterbacks and receivers that can throw and catch the football with anybody. And I think that's the big difference in the Mac now than the Mac when I coached in it. And maybe even just four or five years ago. Yeah. I think that's the biggest difference that we've seen with Mac football is the talent and the skill. Lee touched on the quarterbacks. You're going to get a feel today in watching this game. Both these quarterbacks can make plays. Of course, Josh Harris, but Josh Holliday on the other side also. Great ability to hurt you by throwing the football downfield. Good showcase for some offensive playmakers in this game. Bowling Green comes in with a 10-game home winning streak. And in that streak, the average scoring more than 50 points per game. This is a very fun offense, Kirk. You're going to see all kinds of formations. You're going to see run-pass balance. And, of course, you're going to see Josh Harris. Well, when Urban Meyer came in as a head coach a couple years ago, that's the offense that he brought in. It's a completely different feel. It's a team that's going to spread you out with four or five receivers at a time. And they rely a lot on the quarterback making great decisions. They're fortunate to have Josh Harris. He can throw. He can run. And they've been able to run the football with great authority in these last three games. 246 yards a game. But Harris is the key. They've got to get him going early. Now you're speaking of running. When you see this Michael Turner play, this guy is a football player for NIU. He's the second leading rusher in the nation. And when you look at NIU's team, you get a short, stocky, tough looking guys look at them i'm telling you they're all from the chicago area they look like they came from the neighborhood and they will knock your head off so if they win it'll be because they out knock bowling green off the line of scrimmage and turner runs the football nothing fluky about the no, wins no. for the huskies over maryland or alabama they wore down those yep. supposed big name teams i noticed one thing about the grass here at the doit Wow. It's thick. It's high. I couldn't negate some of the speed for Michael Turner. Have you ever seen grass this thick? No, I, I don't think I ever have. It, it looks pretty, but I think this game is going to be decided by two things. Number one, I think you're going to see a team that's hungry. Bowling Green lost this game last year. They desperately need to have revenge on their mind because of what happened against Northern Illinois and get Josh Harris. The crowd and the Bowling Green Falcons, I think they're ready to go. I think they win this game. I'm going to agree with you 100%. I think the difference between these two football teams, Josh Harris makes big plays yep. and wins the ball game for him. There are the Falcons intent on protecting home turf. It's a call of the game here on ESPN2. Jeff Hollinger and Andre Ware. Jeff. All right, Chris, thank you. Dwight Perry Stadium in Bowling Green, Ohio. Sold out for the fourth time in 38 years. The Falcons host 14th ranked Northern Illinois. The Huskies undefeated, ranked 10th in the BCS. This game will go a long way toward deciding the West representative in the MAC title game. College football on ESPN2, the most anticipated game in MAC history. If you have a ticket here in Bowling Green, you're one of the luckiest fans in Ohio. I'm Jeff Hellinger with Heisman winner Andre Ware and Jimmy Dykes. Northern Illinois is one of the great stories in college football this season, looking toward an undefeated season. They have beaten Maryland, Alabama, Iowa State, and now take on Bowling Green. Yeah, it's uh, been a fabulous run so far for Northern Illinois. Tenth in the BCS standings, and just an unbelievable ride for, for Michael Turner and that Northern Illinois football team. Speaking of Michael Turner, the second leading rusher in America, the man from Chicago, great power. The only scholarship he was ever offered was to Northern Illinois. Yeah, phenomenal combination of size and power. He is the running in the run attack for Northern Illinois. Bowling Green is a top 25 team according to Associated Press. They beat Purdue. They play close at Ohio State. They don't lose here at the Doit. 
And they've got a fine quarterback in Josh Harris. Yeah, Josh Harris is just phenomenal. The ma magician in their offense, he makes the Bowling Green offensive attack go. And if they go today, it's going to be because of Josh Harris. The coaches know all about winning. Joe Novak, the Bill Mallory associate, his first three teams at Northern Illinois went 3-30. and 30. Since then, a power in the making. He says, look, we run the East Coast offense. We run it. We don't throw it. Yeah, he's been he's done a fantastic job of building this program since returning as a defensive coordinator a few years ago. They've had an outstanding run under Joe Novak. Frank Brandon out of Northern Colorado. First year replacing Urban Meyer went to Utah. A long time assistant with Gary Barnett. He is in charge now also with Mike Price at Weaver State. And the weather here has cleared up much better, Andre, than it was earlier this morning when it was raining pretty hard. Yeah, it looked like we were going to get a messy game, but so far so good in terms of the weather holding off. Steve Azar kicking off, and Bowling Green will get it first. And we are underway here at the Dort. It is Jansen Patton. And that's where Bowling Green will take over. And welcome everyone, I'm Jeff Hullinger along with Andre Ware. These are two teams with strong offenses, a lot of offensive stars. Maybe the real story today is going to be which defense stands up and makes a difference in this football game. I think you're right. When you have two talented offensive weapons like Josh Harrison and Michael Turner, it's going to be all on the defense, Northern Illinois. Right now, they have to get a handle on Josh Harris. Josh Harris. These are high times in the map. Times have never been better than they are right now for the entire conference. They have been playing this series since 1967. Bowling Green leads 9-4 last year. Huskies won in Illinois, 26-17. First play is incomplete for the quarterback, Josh Harris. He leads the conference in passing efficiency, 19-5 as a starter. He's an NFL prospect. Yeah, he really is. A lot of guys say he can go anywhere from the second to the fourth round in the ne next year's NFL draft. Ranked 10th in the country, Jeff, in total offense. All right. So second and ten for Bowling Green. Out of the shotgun formation. And Harris going up top man out there. The catch is made by Jarrett. He's in Northern Illinois territory with a first down. Just a fantastic job by Josh Harris of reading coverage. And he saw something, the coaching staff saw something on first down, but right here, he just shows a little play fake inside, holds the, the linebackers and lobs one over the head to Craig Jarrett running down the hash mark of the field. Fantastic touch on the football by Josh Harris it's as well. A 43 yard pickup. Jarrett had knee problems last year. He's a 4 0 student majoring in chemistry and biology. Harris coming to the near side. Magner making the turn and out of bounds at the 29 yard line. It's a pickup of eight. The backs and receivers for Bowling Green, P.J. Pope at 122 yards against Eastern Michigan last week, and Magner, the coach's son, a two-sport athlete, a possession-wide receiver. The offensive line, big question this season, and it's worked out so far. Move from left guard to center, Scott Murkowski, he's the leader, and maybe the best in the Mac. Second and two from the 29. And Harris will keep the football. And he gets four yards up to about the 25 for Northern Illinois. The defensive line, very experienced, very aggressive. And they like to create big plays. Reynolds and Wilson and Cooksey and Holman. You see a lot of them today. The linebackers, one of the better groups Joe Novak has had. Brian Atkinson is nicknamed the Beast. He's the Mac West Defensive Player of the Week. And the DBs, they are called the Mad Dogs. Randy drew all Mac last year. They're a very physical group. On first and ten, Harris with time. Man out there, and it's caught! At the six-yard line, Magner is second reception. And it is a gain of 13 yards and another Falcon first down. Yeah, fabulous job with the eyes of Josh Harris. It's just a, what in the football world we, is noted as a smash route where you have a hitch route outside and Magner going to the corner. Josh Harris holds the corner's eyes long enough for his receiver to get behind coverage and just a fantastic job of touching the football in there. 
Harris is now split to the left as a wide out. Here's the snap up the middle to Pope. And Pope with a few yards up the middle. In fact, he gets two. Are you surprised with the ease that Bowling Green is moving through Northern Illinois? Right well, they're, they're talented offensively, Jeff. They're averaging over 500 yards a game. They spread you out. They find the mismatch in the offense, and they exploit it and take advantage of it, as well as any team in college football. Seventh play of the drive coming up. And it's a very loud stadium. <laughs> you are kidding. And again, it's Harris split to the left side. The snap to Pope, right up the middle. Pope into the end zone. Touchdown, Falcon. Boy, Bowling Green has been excellent in the red zone the past couple of years. And they get down there this time, the very first time in this ball game and take advantage of it and punch one into the end zone. P.J. Pope. And Sean Sweeshum with a point after attempt. And it is good. 13.02 left, opening quarter, opening drive for Josh Harris. How could he have been much better in that drive? This Falcons lead 7-0. The great pumpkins of Bowling Green. <laughs> they grow mustaches and beards here. It gets cold. Yeah, a little Halloween action early. Well, they certainly carved up Northern Illinois in the opening drive, marching 70 yards. We talked about it at the outside of the broadcast about which defense is going to stand up today. That's right. They, you know, they do a good job of executing one of those statement drives in the opening drive of a ball game for Bowling Green. John Swisham getting ready to kick off. Andy Drew is deep. Now this will skip out of bounds and quiet this crowd a bit. Our referee is Ray Vaughn this afternoon. Illegal procedure. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line, first down. Let's go downstairs to Jimmy Dykes. Guys, yes, Northern Illinois has beaten BCS teams this year in Alabama and Maryland, but they have not faced the high-powered offense they're going to face today. We got a taste of it on the first drive, especially at home, Bowling Green. Averaging 52 points a game over the last 10 games in a winning streak, they're beating people by 33 a game. That's the reason why Northern Illinois is the underdog today. I can tell you this, you ask anyone in this stadium, they'll tell you on a Saturday afternoon in October, you don't just come in to Dort Perry Stadium and win a football game if you're the opposing team. Uh, history certainly shows that, Jimmy. The Doit is a very tough place for opposing teams. On first down, the handoff is the Turner. Nothing doing, and it is a loss of three yards tackled by T.J. Carswell. Let's have the lineups for you. The quarterback is Josh Haldy. He grew up in Ohio, had dreams of going to Ohio State. He almost went to Yale. Yeah, and he does an excellent job of operating this offense. 62% over 1,500 yards, 14 touchdowns, Jeff, only three interceptions. He works the offense to perfection. Second and long for Northern Illinois. And it is caught by Fleck. Now a flea flicker with Fleck up top, and it is picked off. Intercepted by Jansen Patton. And Patton is down at the 22-yard line. Boy, just an amazing job of recovery speed by Jansen Patton because he was beat. Sam Hurd was behind him as P.J. Fleck tried to throw a little flea flicker out here. The throw a pass, the receiver pass. Flex out there, he's got him wide open. He just doesn't have enough on the football. Allows, Jan allows Jansen Patton to recover, pick up the football, get it at his highest point, and come down with the interception. And you know what, Joe Novak says he likes to run the ball, stop the run, and play by the rules. A little Are you surprised there? that you would see a flea flicker this early in the ball game? I really I am. You know, you do whatever you can to try to get an advantage when you're on the road in a hostile environment. But boy, just uncharacteristic of the Northern Illinois offense that drive. So Bowling Green gets the football. It is the 16th career interception by Patton. He has a great knack for coming up with the football. 7-0, Falcons lead the Huskies. ESPN2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Budweiser.
The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser. Greg Brandon issued a challenge to all these BG fans to, to match what Northern Illinois did last year. A lot of noise with signs and placards. He wanted them to crank it up. And his team has been doing exactly that. After the turnover, it's Pope. Pope with running room. And Pope into Northern Illinois territory inside the 30. Lionel Hickenbottom is there on the tackle of 47-yard play. Just a fabulous job of reading coverage. Josh Harris and P.J. Pope. Just a little inside move. You see the, the defender on the line of scrimmage, number 27, Rob Lee, come inside on the blitz. P.J. Pope allows him to get inside. Josh Harris right on side, pick, right on pace, picking up the blitz. All by himself, it's James Hawkins. Touchdown. Jeff, I've heard of high power, <laughs> and this is, this is a whole new level. I mean, a couple of passes, Northern Illinois, they sell out on the blitz once again, and Josh Harris makes them pay. They wanted to be aggressive, they wanted to get to Josh Harris, keep a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage, but man, they better get somebody back in coverage. 31-yard touchdown strike to James Hawkins out of Brook Park, Ohio. And the point after attempt is good. Wow! All Bowling Green. Two drives, two touchdowns, and they are just pouring through the Huskies' defense right now. Here at the Deutz, Josh Harris to Hawkins, and he does the rest, taking it in for six. 14-0 Falcons. Michael Turner's carried the ball once here for a loss of three. And that's how it's gone for Northern Illinois here in the first three minutes of game time. Down 14 nothing. Swish up the kick. It is high and very short, taken by Randy Cruz. And brought down at the 27-yard line by T.J. Carswell. Here's Matt Weiner in our studio. Jeff Taco Bell takes us to Ann Arbor, Michigan, just down the road from you guys. Purdue. And the Wolverines, John Navarre, throws it up for Braywan Edwards, who brings it right back down. Big Blue up on top, 7-0 in the first. All right, we're not that far away from Michigan. You're right there in the big house for doing and Michigan getting it on this afternoon. This feels like the big house here. Yeah, so I'll tell you what, it does. First down for Northern Illinois, down two touchdowns. And Michael Turner gets about five yards. Mitchell Crosley is there. So the backs and receivers. The Heisman candidate is Michael Turner. The burner, Big Michael, Sauce, they call him all of those names. B.J. Fleck has been intercepted. You have seen him so far. The offensive line are physical. Opening holes for Turner. As Todd Jelani has been a very vocal leader for Coach Novak. On second down, Turner with running room. Here's Michael Turner. It's a sprint for six. And Turner into the end zone. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. 68 yards for the burner. I'll tell you what, it didn't take them long. The penalty but marker it's, here. And it's going to come and back. And it's coming back. And Bowling Green, they really dodge a bullet there because you start, you get Michael Turner, get him on track. And man, they like to wear you down. You talk about that big offensive line for Northern Illinois. They just lean on you and lean on you until Michael Turner's able to break one like he just did. But it's coming back. Making mistakes on the road is one of the worst things you can do. You're absolutely right. When you have penalties. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Holding. For two seconds down. Penalties and turnovers are the worst things you can do on the road. And it looks like it's going to be a receiver the right side of your screen here. Michael Turner hits the hole right there. The big tight end, Brad Cecilic, just gets, that, gets his hands on the outside. Second and eight for Holding. And up 
the middle, just short of the 35 is A.J. Harrison for Michael Turner to give him a little bit of a breather. He finds four yards. You know, what do you do? You come right back to your horse in Michael Turner. The Bowling Green defensive line, you're going to see a rotation of nine to ten linemen today. Mitchell Crosley had three sacks last week. We've already seen him so far. The linebackers, a group for some concern early, really has grown. Sophomore Ted Pipko has been very, very steady. And the best part of the Bowling Green defense, the defensive backs. Keon Newsom, 23-game starter, Mac West defensive player of the week. So here is Haldy. Penalty marker being chased. And it is incomplete. And we'll see what the marker's all about. P.J. Fleck was... The intended target, a lot of pressure coming from Monty Cooley, the defensive tackle from Carter, Georgia. So the penalty against Northern Illinois. Here's Matt Weiner in our studio. All right, Jeff, back to Ann Arbor we go. We showed you the Wolverines' first touchdown of the game. Steve Breston gave him good field position on a punt return, and then Steve Breston gave him a touchdown on the 21-yard reverse. The freshman can make things happen, and he's given the Wolverines a 14-0 lead. Surprised by that. Well, yeah, you know, I, I thought Purdue would play a little better. Michigan's a good football team. It's going to be tough to go in there and beat them. There's Anthony Gallagher, the punter. Charles Sharon is deep. And it takes a Northern Illinois bounce to about the 17-yard line. It's a 48-yard punt, and Bowling Green will get the football again. Josh Harris, a mere 5 of 6, 148 yards and a touchdown. He gets it again. Ohio on a Saturday afternoon. Great place for football today here. The Deutz. Bowling Green, 158 yards of offense so far. And Northern Illinois, only 14. A first and 10 for Josh Harris. He's got five receivers now. And keeping the football, Quince Holman is there to bring him down. No game back to the line of scrimmage. Well, they, they like to spread you out and let Josh Harris just find the weakness in the defense. They do a lot of at the line of scrimmage calls and he makes the decisions there northern illinois they want to throw a little swing route out in the flat they do a fabulous job of covering it up forcing josh harris to keep the football bowling green leading the mac total offense over 514 yards per game here's harris on second down and he has his man it's caught up to the 34 cornelius mcgrady from reynoldsburg ohio making the grab he gets 16 yards and the first down. And that's where he's gotten better, is just moving the football around, pocket presence, and then finding, getting off the initial receiver to the second and third guys. Josh Harris, Josh Harris 19 and five as a starter. He can get it in the end zone, throwing and running the football. See that orange number five, you think about Donovan McNabb at Syracuse. He plays okay. like him, a little bit like him, you're right. On first down, here he is, and it's caught. The short of the 40 by Cornelius McGrady again. And he got a pretty good pickup. He gets seven. A drill Hansbro, the left cornerback, came up to make the hit. Well, look at those career numbers for Josh Harris. Touchdown passes 39, ranks fourth in Bowling Green uh, history. Rushing touchdowns 37. Total points. And look at that one 7,000. Wow. Over 7,400 yards of total offense. Fabulous career for Josh Harris here at Bowling Green. Had a pretty good day. Now, seven of eight, 170 yards in one touchdown. B.J. Lane in motion. Harris on the run. Coming near side. It's caught by Cornelius McGrady. And out of bounds at the 47. Let's go to Jimmy Dykes. Guys, you talk about the start that Josh Harris has his ball game. He got married last spring, and he says his focus is much better this year. NFL scouts that have come through this campus so far in the fall have been very impressed with his poise and his patience on the field, especially reading that third and fourth option. I can also tell you this. His wife, Tammy, was a four-time Big Ten high jump champion, six-foot high jumper. I think they got a chance for a scholarship in that Harris family somewhere down the line, huh? <laughs> I think you're right. Just tremendous this athlete Josh Harris really impressed with his size and speed and the way he moves around in the pocket first and ten and a Harris it is intercepted picked off by Randy Drew and Drew run out of bounds 
at the 28-yard line. So each team has had a turnover, and this is a return of 15 yards. Well, they finally go to some zone coverage, allowing Randy Drew to read the eyes of Josh Harrison. He's sitting out there in the flat just waiting and waiting and breaks on the football. There you see Josh Harris takes the snap, goes right out there. Randy Drew just right in front of the football. He led the, uh, the, led the MAC last year in interceptions with seven. And so he knows he's got a nose for the football. First and 10, Michael Turner now. In the ball game and it is Turner who gets the call. Dancing his way to the outside and gang tackles for no gain. Good defense by Monty Cooley and T.J. Carswell. who are over there to wrap him up. Yeah, I was talking with defensive coordinator Tim Beckman yesterday, and he said, what we want to do is we got to get a lot of guys around the line of scrimmage to try to stop Michael Turner. We're going to have seven guys, eight guys, sometimes nine guys, if it takes it to get around the football to try and stop him at the line of scrimmage before he gets going. In an era of self-promotion, Turner is the strong silent gun. That's right, yes, very much so. Dumping at about nine and a half for Northern Illinois after the interception. Turner, and good balance, good second effort, gets to about the 24-yard line. Gets two yards. Sunday night, the Chiefs and the Bills. Little Priest Holmes, little Dante Hall, Drew Bledsoe, and Travis Henry, Bills and Chiefs, Sunday night at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, available nationwide on ESPN HD. It all starts with NFL Primetime, brought to you by Miller Lite. At 7.30 Eastern, the best records in the AFC go like this. Yeah, human joystick, Dante Hall. <laughs> That's a bad nickname, I don't Boy. care. Holiday throwing wide open and dropped by David McDermott, and it was clear sailing into the end zone. Nothing but open ocean in front of him. Yeah, and Josh Haldy did a fabulous job of waiting this route out a little, little square in by David McDermott. And you see here, you see the hands. The hands are down, they should be up, allowing him to bring the football in. And he turns, he's looking towards the end zone a little bit too early. When he makes that catch, he walks into the end zone. Steve Azar, the best kicker in the match. This is a 41-yard field goal. It is long enough, and it is good. So Northern Illinois is on the board, courtesy of Steve Azar, the all-time Mac career kick-scoring leader, now with 335. The Huskies of Northern Illinois, 14th in the country, 10th in the BCS. How did they get that way? With big victories over some of the biggest teams in the country, like yeah. Maryland, like Maryland, Alabama. Alabama. And then Iowa State as well. Michael Turner, that guy, we're going to get back in this football game. He's got to get started. But you got to remember, they're number 10 in the BCS standings, the highest rank of a non-BCS conference team in the first week of the standings all time since the BCS came into existence. So pretty impressive for Northern Illinois. Here's Steve Azar's kick, taken by Pat. At the five. And Patton is hit hard as he crosses the 25-yard line. That's where Bowling Green will take over the football. It's a return of 22 yards. And they're going to get back in this football game, Northern Illinois. It's going to start with slowing down Josh Harris and making Bowling Green earn yardage and not give up big plays on, on defense. They, they decided to blitz, be aggressive in the first two drives. Then they went to a little zone, came up with a turnover. So now you got to make Josh Harris think his way down the field. We've got almost 200 yards here, and we've got 723 left in the opening quarter. On first and ten. He'll keep it. Nothing doing. And nothing. So it'll bring up second and ten. Martin Wilson met him, the fine defensive tackle. We're here in Bowling Green, Ohio, number 14, Northern Illinois, facing a tough Bowling Green team. We're at the Deutz, as it is sold out today. I'm Jeff Hellinger with Andre Ware and Jimmy Dykes. And so far, Bowling Green has been very, very strong offensively. First two possessions, two touchdowns. And Northern Illinois trying to slow them down a little bit. Come back to the field goal by Steve Azar. Harris, pumping. 
Now back the other way. Firing downfield, it's incomplete. Just throwing the ball out of bounds along the Northern Illinois sideline. Penalty marker on the field. Be in that area of holding. Brian Atkinson was the player chasing Josh Harris. He's known as the Beast, which is a great name for a football player. And eligible. And those big linemen got downfield a little bit early. But uh, they're doing a pretty good job, a better job, of kind of containing Josh Harris so far in this drive and in the la actually the last two drives. An eligible receiver downfield on the offense. That penalty is declined. And, and that's what happens when you have a quarterback coming to the left and then going back to the right. Where he's going up and down. You, you lose side. him because you think he's going to take off with the football. And Josh Harris has learned over the last year or so that where his game has really improved to keep his eyes down the field and look for receivers as he's approaching the line of scrimmage. Big guy thinks he's going to run, just turns up field a little early. Third and ten for Bowling Green. Harris in trouble. He'll keep the football. He'll get the first down. And knocked down at the 48-yard line by Hansbro. A 20-yard pickup by Harris. If he's not throwing, he's running. You know, I talked to the strength coaches about Josh Harris, and I asked him, just how fast is he? They said, well, he's not all that fast, 4'7", maybe, but he's quick. He's quicker than he is fast. Watch this. He pulls it down, and right here, look at this move. This leads. Brian Atkinson, the linebacker, in his tracks and is able to pick up the first down, but he is quick. He's got a nice arm, good size for a quarterback, and will play next year on the next level. You really believe that? I really do. From the shotgun, here's Pope. And Pope very close to a 10-yard pickup. It's about nine and a half. You know, everybody last year made such a big deal about Bowling Green in Northern Illinois, but it was Toledo who kind of snuck in. Well, they did. Victories over the teams in the final two weeks. Bowling Green goes in there eight and zero, oh, and you know, 41 seconds for Northern Northern excuse me Northern Illinois against Toledo last year. They go in there eight and zero going into that football game, trying to get to the MAC championship, and Toledo knocks them off, and there that was their season. So. Bowling Green, they go to Northern Illinois and get knocked off. So a little revenge factor for Bowling Green here this afternoon. Toledo's just kind of lurking. It's lurking. Right there. <laughs> That's right. Tom Amster's a fine head coach up the road at Toledo. Here's P.J. Pope wrapped up by Marlon Watson. He gets two yards. Well, they do an excellent job of just mixing enough run with a pass where you got to respect the run defensively, this Bowling Green offense, and then all of a sudden, when you get guys around the line of scrimmage, or too many, they go over the top against you. Josh Harris, he's the best, one of the best in the country at reading coverages and getting the ball to his receiver. And the injured Husky right now, they are attending to. Yeah, we talk about Bowling Green and, and their success on offense. I'll tell you just how good they are, Jeff. Second in the entire country in total offense. As much as they throw the football in seven games, they've only given up 10 sacks. So Josh Harris, he doesn't get his uniform dirty all that much. If it is, it's because he's running the football. Martin Wilson, who is the junior. Checking out his knee. Now they can't afford a whole lot of injuries on that defensive front for Northern Illinois. They got a few guys banged up. Look at that stat. Nine first downs to none for Northern Illinois. This dominance offense. First and ten for Josh Harris. A Brady in motion. Harris across the middle behind this receiver at the 30. James Hawkins who cut, caught the touchdown. And Brian Atkinson was over there a little bit behind him but he's trying to stop and they're in zone coverage and you want your receivers to sit down or slow down going through zone coverage not take big licks and Josh Harris trying to hit his receiver on the back shoulder to slow him down so he won't absorb a huge lick going across the middle on second and ten the option here's the pitch and fine defensive play as Rob Lee came up to hit P.J. Pope it's a loss of five yards let's go to Matt Weiner right now in our studio Matt Jeff, Florida State, number five in the first BCS standings of the season, taking on Wake Forest at home, and that is Leon Washington straight up the gut. And there he goes, 64 yards for the Knolls, who take a 10-point lead. 
there, Matt. Disappointing season for the ACC. Yeah, it really is. Florida State jumped out the gate pretty good, then Miami just went in there and put one on them at home. So they're trying to trying to get their uh, get things back on track. It's third and 15. Trying to set up the screen, does Harris. P.J. Pope. And Pope is gang tackled in front of the Bowling Green bench. He gets eight yards. Jason Hawkins, the middle linebacker from Schaumburg, Illinois. He's a 6'2", 230-pound junior on the initial hit. Well, they're going to actually think about going for it here. You like that idea? And it's not a bad decision. Not a bad decision. And, and if indeed that's what they choose to do because it's really too long for a field goal. Uh, maybe in terms of uh, a field position, you go ahead and punt this one. And that's, that's what they're going to wind up doing. Yeah, but you've got so much momentum that's gone your way here in the first half. If you give them bad field position here. Well, that's true. But if you get the first down, you increase the momentum. Nate Fry from Finley, Ohio, right down the road. And P.J. Flack, indeed, at his 10-yard line. And here's the punt. And down at the two-yard line. Fine special teams play by the punter Nat Fry, a 35-yard punt. And when we come back, Northern Illinois down 14-3 with some troubling field position. Joe Novak at work at Northern Illinois under Bill Mallory from 80 to 83. And he is as old school as it gets, and that's a good thing. And he came back here and has done a pretty good job. Look at that, set. 224 total yards to only 17. That goes right along with that nine first downs to zero for Northern Illinois. On first down, busting throw, and taken down at the 15-yard line is Michael Turner, who gives him 14 yards and a little bit of breathing room. Tackled by Jelani Jordan from Atlanta. He is the sophomore. Well, Michael the burner Turner, Heisman candidate here, returns kicks inside, outside runner with speed, size and speed, averaging 132 rushing yards a game. This is fantastic. Last year's second in the nation in rushing yards. This year, right on pace as well. First down for the Huskies. Michael Turner behind the line of scrimmage. And Jovan Burks, the middle linebacker, makes the tackle. And it is a loss of two. Well, they are just keeping guys around the line of scrimmage, trying not to let Michael Turner get started. And it's going to be a rough day. I think Josh Hawley's going to have to pick the football up and throw it. They're going to keep eight guys around the line of scrimmage. That means you got man-to-man -man coverage, and guys like P.J. Fleck and Sam Hurd are going to have to get involved in this football game early. So you're really forcing Haldy to make some throws. Got to, well, you got to make him win, win the football game if you're, if you're uh, Bowling Green. Second and long. Here's Turner. And not much for Turner. As he's wrapped up by Jason Morton, he gets three yards. Tonight, ESPN and ESPN 2F. Two great SEC matchups in primetime. It's 7.15 Eastern on ESPN2. Ole Miss looks to remain unbeaten in the SEC. They host number 20, Arkansas. And then on Espen, 7.45 Eastern. Auburn, a resurgent Tiger team, taking on number 9, LSU. So a look at Eli Manning and the season that he has had to date. He's had a fabulous career at, at Ole Miss. 17 touchdowns, only six interceptions. Pretty good year. Leads the SEC in touchdown passes. Third and nine. Hawley from the shotgun. In trouble. He'll kick the football and down he goes. It's after 21 yard line by Will Teague. He only gets four yards. Here's Matt Weiner in our studio. Matt. Hi, Jeff, and here's USC on the road in Seattle where they haven't won since 93, but this helps the pitch to the freshman, Len Dale White. Breaks out of a couple of tackles, breaks into the end zone for the touch. Trojans on top 27. Meanwhile, Miami going to figure into this MAC race, leading at Kent State, 17-14. Power all through the MAC. Anthony Gallagher, second punt. And Sharon will field the ball in heavy traffic and down in Husky territory at the 49-yard line. It's a 30-yard punt. That's going to be a late hit. A late hit. And they're going to tack on some more to this one as if the Bowling Green. Needed more, uh, more help from the officials. They're doing pretty good without it. But boy, Northern Illinois right now just, just cannot do much right offensively, defensively, and on special teams. 
Ray Vaughn, a referee, third penalty against Joe Novak's club. He's just going to have to get him settled down offensively, find a way. Dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, they've started a little bit slow here in Northern Illinois, but this is a team, remember, that went into Tuscaloosa in front of 80,000 and secured a victory. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, you see him here. He's just down. Charles Sharon. And then everybody's starting to fall on him. Brian Atkinson and the rest of those guys. Jason Hawkins. Not intentional, but they hit him. So they get the extra 15 yards. And again, is the Pope. He is smothered. Fine defense by Northern Illinois. The Beast. Brian Atkinson all over him. It's a loss of five. Yeah, nicknamed that by his teammates because of his size and his speed. Runs 4-6. And, I mean, he comes through right there in the, in the A-gap, reads it out, and is able to bring down P.J. Pope before he gets started. And that's a read by Josh Harris. He'll stick it in there, give it to P.J. Pope. If he sees the linebacker coming through, he'll keep it and pull it the next time. Well, that's going to be the final play of the first quarter. So far, so good. For Bowling Green here in Ohio, the Thundersticks are doing their job, and they are cranking it up in the stands and on the field against the Huskies of Northern Illinois. 14-3. Great day for football here in Ohio. Bowling Green with Northern Illinois in the first quarter. Looking strong as we begin the second quarter. The Falcons are flying high again. Here comes the blitz. Harris dumps it out. Dangerous play. P.J. Pope not able to come up with the football. Vincent Reynolds had Pope wrapped around. A good job of just getting some pressure on Josh Harris. Vincent Reynolds, you see him here coming to your screen, just fighting and fighting. Everybody trying to get to the football, does a good job of breaking up the football from P.J. Pope, not allowing him to get started. And now this is where you want Bowling Green if you're Northern Illinois. Third down and long situations to make, them, make it tough on them to convert for first down. Harris only has one completion in his last five throws. Look at the third long. Firing near side, it's caught by Charles Sharon. And Sharon has enough for the first down. Close to the 21 yard line, Jason Hawkins making the tackle, he gets 18 yards. Well, I say that and they go off and play loose coverage in zone. And usually that's just trying to keep everything in front of you and not backing up past the first down marker. Josh Harris just does a good job. Just a little hitch route outside, stop, start and stop. And then he cuts it back inside. It's the yards after the catch that allow the, for the first down there. Got 238 yards total offense right now to 31 for Northern Illinois. Here comes an all-out blitz. First down jump pass, and it is caught by Steve Sanders. Nope, didn't hang on to the football. All right, the ESPN2 game track, it has been all Bowling Green. Josh Harris with a very fast start, running the ball, throwing the ball here, going up top. And a touchdown, it's very easy, 14-0 to James Hawkins. Meanwhile, the burner Turner, Michael Turner has been stuffed so far. He only has 23 yards on seven carries. And they're making, they made him work for those 23. Second and ten. He's got five wide receivers. Harris and bouncing through the hands. Steve Sanders from Cleveland. He is a 6'3", 200-pound sophomore. Couldn't make the grab. Yeah, he's had a couple of drops, but he's been pretty much on the mark uh, all afternoon. He's had some, some one or two throwaways where he's smart with the football, nothing there. Don't want to force it, get his team into trouble, and just throwing the ball, getting rid of the football. He has really matured over the last year as a quarterback. You know, talking to him, there's a calm quietness about him, and he's just confident in what he's doing this season. You would recognize that. You had plenty of that at Houston. I don't know if I had it like he has it, though. On third down, Harris across the middle. And short of the first down is P.J. Pope. 
Kirsten Strothman for Rochelle, Illinois, the right linebacker. Makes the stop. We, we, talk, yards. we talked about it a little bit about Josh Harris, and I asked him, what in the offseason did you work on most? And he said, well, you know, it was my accuracy. I had to get a little more accurate between 5 and 15 yards. I could always throw the deep ball. Talking with the coaching staff, they kind of uh, said the same thing about him. He went out in the offseason, got better at the completion uh, yardage between 5 and 15 yards. He's been fantastic this year. Went from 60% to 65. Sean Swishaw with a 32-yard field goal. And it is long enough, and it is good. So Bowling Green finding points with touchdowns, and now Sean Swisham hits. All Falcons, 17-3. The enthusiasm at Bowling Green for game day with Chris Kirk and Lee yesterday and today was uh, off the chart. I mean, people here are so hungry for attention for the football program and for good reason. Yeah, and you, you come in and with a team that's ranked 14th in the country coming into your home stadium. It has been just wild all week long here at Bowling Green. And, and boy, they are out. <laughs> And uh, there's, there's the set for game day. They've been here for quite a while this week, and it's crazy. Fans just all over the place and, and ready to get it on. That's a great bus they have, isn't it? it, it you know what? It's fantastic. Got a chance <laughs> to go in there uh, before the game, spend a little time. Those guys, uh, they travel well, don't they? They do. You and I have a taxi cab waiting for us, but no problem. <laughs> That's right. Sean Swisha, who hit from 31 yards out. We'll kick off. He's from Wallaceburg, Ontario. And Randy Drew is awaiting the kickoff. Well, you look up and down the map, and you see some really good teams. And you see some fine quarterbacks. And too. you wonder why. Why is the MAC all of a sudden are the smaller conferences having some, as much success this year? And I think it's it's a direct reflection of the NCAA rule that allows most universities are all now that you the uh, 85 scholarship limit. And so now it allows players to fall through the cracks. They come to schools like Bowling Green, Northern Illinois. After a couple of years of that happening, now they can compete with anybody. And you've seen it when uh, Northern Illinois can go into Alabama and beat them on their home field and Bowling Green to beat Purdue. Got some clock problems right now. We're trying to get squared away. Yeah, and I think the Mac has been helped by television coverage too. Absolutely. I mean, it helps in recruiting. It helps just across the board in terms of uh, the overall success of a football program. Well, they're fixing the clock here. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Hi, Jeff. The leaders over on the east side of the MAC is Miami. Miami on the move at Kent State. Cal Murray, two-yard touchdown run. They're up there. UConn beats Akron on a last-second field goal in Ohio. Falls at Buffalo. That means the nation's longest losing streak is over at 19 for the Bulls. Guys, for the record, Army is now on the clock. They have lost nine straight. All right, Matt, thank you here at Bowling Green. Trying to get that clock fixed. And we'll take a break. Falcons lead 17-3 with the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Back to Ohio after this. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by State Farm. Providing insurance and financial services. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Suzuki's award-winning automobiles, motorcycles, ATVs and marine engines. All proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy. Back at Joint Perry Stadium, named after the legendary coach. Started here in 1955. He had a perfect season in 1959. And Swisham kicking off. Kind of like a wedge. High and short. Randy Drew underneath it. And Drew dancing his way close to the 30-yard line. Tackled by Keon Newsom. Take a look at our Aflac trivia question. Here goes. Bowling Green's win over Purdue, the school's first over a ranked team since 1972. What former Falcon quarterback coached that team? Wow. Can you do it? Tough one. How about a hint? Tough West Virginia. Back to the answer shortly. On first down, 
Pauly Ibra with time downfield, and it is intercepted. Jansen Patton, his second interception of the first half, trying to hit P.J. Black was Josh Holly, but it's the second pass interception snared by Patton. And they're going to just have to work their way down the field. They're trying to hit big plays and get back in this pass. But Jansen Patton, his second interception, had a three-interception game against Western Michigan this year. But look at him break on the football, and then what I like is he goes up at the highest point to catch the football. Just like a receiver, just like your talk, go get it at its highest point. He has done a fantastic job. His brother played, uh, last year played for the Atlanta Falcons. So, excuse me, his father played, played for the Atlanta Falcons years ago. So, good athletic background in that family for uh, Jansen Tack. That Falcon tie runs deep. Yep. Here's the handoff up the middle. B.J. Lane. And lying down at the 43-yard line. Boy, they seem to be pushing all the right buttons. Bowling Green offensively, defensively. They're getting P.J. Pope involved in the game, in the running game now. Take a little heat off, off Josh Harris. B.J. Lane as well getting into the mix. He's had five interceptions the last two weeks. Yeah, he had three in one game against Western Michigan. On first down, and it's D.J. Lang, wrapped up by Strothman. Are you surprised at all about the decision of Northern Illinois, an East Coast offense, admittedly, that they like to run the ball and slam it at you? They've done a flea flicker. Well, they've gone long. They've really veered away from, you know, how they got here. I, I don't, I don't, it's, I'm not surprised that they veered away at, of, of how they've gotten here. I am surprised at the way that they've veered. Uh, trying to throw it deep and trick plays instead of just managing the passing game with just some, some mid-range passes. On second down, Harris. It's complete. McGrady run out of bounds. Has it up for the first down in front of the Northern Illinois bench. He gets 14 yards. All right, Bowling Green's win over Purdue. The school's first over ranked team since 1972 with former Falcon quarterback coach that team. And the answer is Don Nalen. How about that? Nalen out of many years at he, West Virginia. Did such a great job. He did a fabulous job at, uh, at West Virginia for a long, long time. And the win with the Bobby Dodd. They had a big win the other night. West Virginia over Virginia Tech. On first down, Harris hit as he throws the ball by Brian Atkinson. It's incomplete. Let's go down to Jimmy Dykes right now. Guys, I'm with the answer to the question. The last time this stadium was this full, you're the head coach. What kind of memories do you have? Well, Bowling Green's a great place. Uh, you know, I, I went to school here. I coached here for 12 years. And boy, what a spectacle. Northern Illinois ran into a hornet's nest today. <laughs> Two programs. You had success with yourself as a coach. Had some pretty good victories this week, huh? West Virginia over Virginia Tech, and these guys are off to a good start. Right. Uh, West Virginia was dynamite, and it looks like Bowling Green's going to be dynamite. All right. Not often I talk to a guy that's a member of five Hall of Fames, huh? Wow. Second down. Across the middle. Diving catch made by Charles Sharon. Another Bowling Green first down. Just a bullet. Thrown by Tenor. Yeah, bullet thrown by Josh Harris. You see the arm strength there, just right on a rope. With Charles Sharon. Here he's just in the shotgun, a little post pattern, a timed post pattern. He's right on time. Ball right on the line, away from the the uh, crossing linebacker, low and away. So Rob Lee has no, uh, cannot make a play on it as well. So another first down for Bowling Green and Josh Harris. He's been having his way with the Northern Illinois defense. D.J. Lane, not much there. In fact, he loses two. Strothman cut him down. His third tackle of the ball game. He's the outside linebacker. And to really give you an overview of how this first half has gone, and we've got a lot of time left here in the second quarter. Look at the plays and look at the guards. It's just dominance right here. 286 yards to just 36 for Northern Illinois. And it, it has just been total dominance on the offensive side of the football for Bowling Green. Ah! 
Harris will keep. Bouncing off tacklers is Josh Harris. Finally, Akeel Grant gets him, but not before Harris finds nine yards up the middle. And there you see the strength, 6'3", 238 pounds. It's a good job, just a designed run here, a little option play, defensive end goes outside, Josh Harris cuts it back up and inside, and that's all Josh Harris. Take on the, take on the strong safety as well, Akeel Grant. Harris, 6'3", 240 pounds, and they love to go to him in this red zone area. Third and short, up top. And it is gone! Touchdown, Charles Sheridan! Just a little fade route outside, and actually Josh Harris, the defender Rob Lee's over the top. Josh Harris throws it behind and high and allows Charles Sharon to go up at his highest point and bring the football in. Boy, just total dominance right now by Bowling Green. 17-yard timing play. Swish him the point after attack. And it is good. Everything has been good for the Falcons in this first half. They're just up and outside, throwing behind. Allow your receiver Charles Sharon to go up and make a touchdown catch. Northern Illinois Cinderella has run into Freddy Krueger here in Ohio. Yeah, and his blazer sharp. <laughs> <laughs> He's out well before Halloween, I'll tell you that. Swisham kicking off again, and it is high and short. Taken by Drew. And Drew down at the 25-yard line. Josh Harris has been awesome in this first half. You take a look at what he has done. 14-22, 258 yards, two touchdowns, one pass interception. Yeah, and he's just been putting outstanding touch on the football, just lobbing it up and over the linebackers, reading coverage. If it's not there, he pulls it down, makes plays with his legs, inside, outside, directing traffic, taking on defenders. Boy, he came to win today. First down for Josh Haldy at Northern Illinois. Now 24-3 here in the second quarter. Michael Turner. In front of the Northern Illinois bench, gets five. It'll bring up second and five. Monday night countdown previews ABC's Monday night football game. Provides up-to-the-minute NFL news with Stuart Scott and Tom Jackson, Ron Jaworski, Michael Irvin, and Chris Mortensen. Monday night countdown at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Then join Al Michaels, John Madden, and Lisa Guerrero for the Dolphins battle the Chargers on Monday night football. Miami at San Diego. Well, look at this, passing oh. yards, 258 to nothing. They'll keep it on the ground. And just short of the 30 is Michael Turner, hit by Ryan Newble from Brownsville, Tennessee. He's the right end. And, and it's a direct reflection when you talk about the success of Bowling Green's offense. You keep the football, you, have, you give yourself opportunities to have success. They've had the ball, Bowling Green, 1340 to only six minutes and 50 seconds for Northern Illinois. Dominance across the board, everywhere for Bowling Green. The break branded. Don't set the fine job here, replacing Urban Meyer, who's done a fine job yeah. in Salt Lake City for Utah. Holiday. And it is hot and up for the first down. Sam Hurd from San Antonio, Texas, the wide receiver. Keon Newsom makes the hit, picks up a Breckenridge High School, pretty good high school program there in San Antonio. But that's what Northern Illinois has got to do. They've got to work the football down the field, loosen up Bowling Green. They've got eight, seven, eight guys around the line of scrimmage. You've got to pick it up and throw it. Man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. The throwing lanes are going to be there. Just got to have confidence, drop back, and get it done. They have done nothing in the air. Nothing completion. A handoff near side. And knocked out of bounds is Michael Turner by Patton. 
Patton's got two interceptions, and that's his first tackle. Tell me, Stone Mountain. Michael Turner's got 4-4 four, four speed, 4-4-1 four, four, to be exact, and there you see it because it looks like he's going to get strung out, and then all of a sudden he's by everybody and is able to turn the football up and pick up positive yards, six yards, when it looked like he's going to get stopped for maybe a one-yard gain at most. Michael Turner, you see the numbers. He is out. A.J. Harris is in. Second and four. Holdy in trouble. And down goes Holdy. Brad Williams got to him first. Well, percentages say if Michael Turner leaves the football game, they're not going to run it. And they go play action. Bowling Green calls the right defense at the right time. They bring pressure from the outside. Mitch Hewitt, a bunch of guys showing up at the party. Brad Williams, Michael Crossley as well. They're on, on, uh, in and on Josh Haldy. Man, just pushing all the right, just making all the right calls for Bowling Green. Falcons are second in the league in sacks with 22 for a Mac high of 158 yards long. That is amazing. That's a, a lot of sacks for a football team. One for four on third down conversions. What's coming? And they'll stop it. And Haldy may be the luckiest man here <laughs> in the stadium. Texas penalties against the Huskies. Here's Ray Vaughn. Dead ball, delay on the offense, five yards for this spot, remains third down. Boy, this is, this is a football team right now, Northern Illinois, who's just been totally surprised. Off balance on, uh, on defense, offensively, they just can't seem to get things in sync, can't get their best player going. Michael Turner, and I mean, Bowling Green just looks. You, know, you talk about revenge and, and how big a part it plays in a football game. They grabbed a hold of that baby and, and just started to ride with it. And it's starting to rain again here in Ohio. Low snap. Hawley in trouble. And Hawley is brought down at the 35 by Mitchell Crosley out of Springfield, Ohio. His first sack. And his eighth on the season. It's a loss of three and fourth down. Well, that's got to be frustrated position to be in Josh Haldy. I've been there before when you just can't seem to get things going offensively and guys aren't open and boy you just don't know what to do really. Here's Gallagher with the punt and he smashes this one. Charles Sharon is deep. And here comes Sharon. He's got some room. And upended at the 46 yard line. A saving tackle. A 45 yard punt. 17 yard return. And Anthony Nix is the one who brought him down. 24-3, Bowling Green leading Northern Illinois. The critics have spoken. Back football is a must-see. Football, now playing at a stadium near you. Rated E for excellence. State University, the caliber of education needed to empower the next generation of leaders. Not a seat to be found here at Doit Perry Stadium in Bowling Green, Ohio. As their Falcons are leading the Huskies 24-3. You can see the rain on the lens of our camera. A hearty lot here today. A little cool and at times raining very hard. Let up about uh, an hour before kickoff, but Tuck is coming back. On first down to give it to P.J. Pope. Not much there. Bowling Green this season. And what really gets your attention are two games. One a win, one a loss. Against number 10, Purdue, and against number 8, Ohio State. 
Yeah, they played well in the Ohio State game right there. Had a chance to go down and tie it up and get it into overtime and just couldn't get it done right there at the end. I think Josh Harris throws an interception in the final drive and Ohio State runs the clock out. But boy, just a pretty good season for Bowling Green thus far. Second and 10. Keep it on the ground. Spinning into Northern Illinois territory as P.J. Pope, he gets six yards. Let's go back in time. Bowling Green taking on Purdue. It's September 6th. They do a fabulous job of just hanging on right there at the end of the football game and comes away with a 27-26 victory. Then they go into Ohio State, the final play of the game, trying to make a play. Josh Harris throws an interception, had an opportunity. To try to get it in the end zone, get the game into overtime, but boy, they scared Ohio State on the road. On third and five, here's Harris, and firing the ball to Cole Magner, the possession receiver. It's enough for a first down, he gets 10. Boy, they just run a little curl route outside, a little manageable passing game. Now from Bowling Green and Cole Magner, coach's son out of Alaska, Palmer, Alaska, comes up with a reception. Here you see Josh. Harris, his eyes, using his eyes, moving defenders around. Then all of a sudden, he comes back outside to his receiver in the curl, holding the safety away from Cole Manger, allowing him to get over. Boy, I'm really, really impressed with Josh Harris. Operating on first down. The option. He'll keep it. And he gets another first down. So, I'll tell you what. What an awesome performance by Josh Harris so far. Let's see where the spot is. It'll be very close to the first down. Let's go to Jimmy Dykes right now. Guys, you're talking about Bowling Green's wide receiver, Cole Magner. One of the best playmakers in the MAC, but he comes from pretty humble beginnings, although he led the state of Alaska in touchdown passes as a quarterback in high school. Not a lot of people were on him. Actually, Bowling Green told us yesterday they had three or four scholarships left to give, and he was the one guy they gave it to, and the coaching staff voted six to five in favor to give him the scholarship. Right now, all those coaches, they'll say, no, it was 11 to 0. But it was really a six to five vote in favor of Cole Magner. Greg Brandon was the one who voted in favor of the scholarship. Here is Harris. And if there's any doubt about the first down, let there not be now. He gets two yards. Jason Hawkins for Northern Illinois yeah, makes the stop. On Cole Magner, he's such a, pretty, he's such a good athlete that, uh, that both coaches on both sides of the football were lobbying for him. Wanted him as a defensive back. He's a pretty good DB in high school as well. And, they kept him on offense, and he's been pretty, pretty good. 47 catches coming into the game, seven touchdowns. Pretty good basketball player as well. Had a shortage of players last year on the basketball team. He came in and, and uh, finished the season, the last seven games. Now the basketball coach is lobbying for him to come back this season. Bowling Green and Northern Illinois both expected to have excellent basketball. That's right. Sixth play of the drive on the ground. More running room in the Northern Illinois defense for P.J. Pope. He gets seven yards. Tonight, ESPN and ESPN2 have a couple of the great SEC matchups in primetime. Ole Miss taking on number 20, Arkansas at 715. Then on ESPN at 745, number 21, Auburn will face number nine, LSU. And Auburn started very slowly. They got defeated by USC at home and then Georgia Tech, but they have really geared it up since. The Cadillac, an awesome football player, and look what he did last week with 161 yards. Yeah, they washed and polished him, and he is he's running pretty good right now. I had him in a game last year where he rushed for over 200 yards against Syracuse. And going into the end zone, is it intercepted? It is picked off by Randy Drew. And Drew, what is hurt? What a catch, though, by Randy Drew. He read this, and it's a little hitch route outside with a corner route over the top, and he baited Josh Harris into making this throw, gave him a lot of room. Then all of a sudden, as he saw the throwing motion, took off. He's got 4-4 speed, great recovery speed, and is able to get back and make this interception. Second interception of Josh Harris on the afternoon, both of them by Randy Drew. So Drew from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, has a little sense on Harris that maybe his teammates do not. He's down right now. He's their best defensive back. As I said last year, he led the MAC with seven interceptions. But here he baits Josh Harris into throwing this pass, pass throwing that route out there, going to, to try to go to the corner to Cole Magner again. 
Boy, look at that catch. Defense backs, you know, they're not supposed to make catches like that. I say that's why the DBs, because they can't catch the football, otherwise it'd be wide receivers, but Randy Drew did a fabulous job. Two interceptions in this first half. Here, Josh Harris goes over the top. Well-thrown football right on the money. Just Randy Drew makes a, a better play on the football. Great diving catch. Yeah. Looking like Butch Johnson in that Super Bowl. <laughs> in the Here's first down for Haldane. Michael Turner gets the call. And everywhere Michael Turner has gone here in the first half, he's encountered a lot of orange jerseys. He gets four. Mike Thaler from Cincinnati, Ohio, the nose guard, the sophomore, at 6'1", 280, makes the hit. Yeah, they keep running Michael Turner, but to get back in this football game, they're going to have to sprinkle it around, get the receivers involved to loosen up running lanes for Michael Turner, then unleash him once you have the Bowling Green defense loosened up a little bit. On second down, holding. And drop. Sam Hurd had an opportunity to catch it. But couldn't bring it in. Patton was over there on the And cup. they're going to have to catch the football. <laughs> when you throw it, you got to catch it. Sam Hurd made a pretty good catch earlier. But here, Josh Haldy right on the money with it. They go with that smash route combination where they just sit a receiver outside and a corner route over the top. Not able to come up with the football. Haldy thought about going to Yale. He's a terrific yeah. student. But he realized that if he went to the Ivy League, his parents would have to fork out one hundred thousand right. dollars so he took the free ride from Northern Illinois. Now third and six, he'll bring a timeout and go over and talk with Joe Novak. We'll take a break. 227 remains before halftime, all bowling green. Bowling Green, Ohio. Many of the fans here on their feet. We take a look at Joe Novak's Huskies and what they have accomplished in the season. And there has been a lot to smile about. Now, keep in mind, Northern Illinois had to come back. Out of those seven victories, six of them will come from behind wins. So don't count Coach Joe Novak and that uh, Northern Illinois team out of this football game yet. On third and six, here's Holding. And it is caught first down as Powers makes the grab. And he spun out of bounds. It's a pick up a 12. Do a pretty good job of working the perimeter outside where the receivers can catch the football, get out of bounds, stop the clock, try to get some points on the board going into halftime. You wonder about what sort of impact the concussion for Halder that he had two weeks ago has, has, has really meant for him this week and, and today. I think he's bounced back pretty good. I mean, you, you, a little gunshot maybe last week, but uh, I think he'll be okay. He's just got to get, him, get his teammates going, get some type of rhythm going offensively. On first down, on the ground, Turner. Penalty marker goes flying, now cutting against the grain for some extra yardage. Great second and third effort. Finds his way to the 47 before he runs into Mitchell Crosley. And let's see what this penalty marker is all about. Northern Illinois it goes. How about an update? Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio. Matt. All right, Jeff, coming up at halftime, the traveling circus better known as Texas Tech made its way to Missouri today. The Red Raiders and the Tigers combined for 92 points. We'll tell you how that shook out. An offensive explosion of sorts from Notre Dame, the fighting Irish at BC. I'll tell you if their uh, point production was enough to beat the Golden Eagles. All that plus, give you updated on the rest of the day in the MAC and the Big Ten, all coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. Stay with us. I guess Brad Smith went toe to toe with DJ Simmons today. Have you seen Texas Tech play? I have not. I hadn't had a chance to see it, but uh, they, they talk a lot about the passing game and what they're able to do out there. He's had a, a successful season, very good season. I mean, it, it gets to the point where they roll up so many yards oh, as you look yeah. at the penalties. You lose perspective on what the numbers mean and how right. it relates to their football team. So after the penalty, first and long. Baldy in trouble, swinging it to the far side. It's caught by Keith Perry from Maywood, Illinois, the tight end. And he is knocked down by T.J. Carswell after a three-yard pickup. Yeah, T.J. Carswell, he's li listed at three different positions. Free safety, strong safety, 
an outside linebacker, a tremendous athlete who makes plays. He even does, uh, does a pretty good job on special teams for Bowling Green as well. But Josh Haldy, he's don't count this kid out. He's, he's going to continue to fight and fight and fight, get his guys back in this football game. And it may take the arm of Josh Haldy to do so. Second and 15. Haldy in trouble. And Haldy is down. Sometimes as a quarterback, you have a clock in the back of your mind when you drop back to pass. You pump it one time, you pump it twice, it better be coming out of your hands. You don't have that kind of time to bring it back down two or three two or three different times. And that's what happened with Josh Haldy there. Nobody open. Go ahead and get rid of the football and come back on third down. Haldy is three for seven. 20 yards and one interception. Compare that with Josh Harris today. And you get a sense of 24 to three. And last year, 18 sacks in 12 games. 24 sacks in eight games this season for Bowling Green. Oh, our aggressive. And that guy probably leads the team. Or last year, he had seven of those sacks. Setting up the screen and drops. Just as well that Michael Turner didn't hang on to the ball because Leininger was there. The defensive tackle had a little bit of Talking about Mitchell Crosley, the uh, defensive lineman for Bowling Green. He came into the game. This year, with seven sacks, leads the team was able to get to Josh Holly to play before. And they, they are just disrupting everything right now that Northern Illinois is trying to do offensively. Here's Anthony Gallagher again. Short punt taken by Sharon. Right up the middle for Sharon. Charles Sharon. Down at the 40 with 40 seconds left. Anthony Gallagher, the putter. They have saved even more. 36-yard punt, 23-yard return, and Bowling Green has plenty of time and plenty of offense with an opportunity to really take it to Northern yeah. Illinois even more. Yeah, Charles Sharon here just setting up blocks, and right now the hole's right down the middle of the field. And the, the punter, Anthony Gallagher, comes up and has to, to bring down Charles Sharon, but otherwise he's gone to the end zone. Right now it's plenty of time on the clock for this Bowling Green offense. Penalty marker. Harris. It is caught by James Hawkins, who had a touchdown in the first quarter. And out of bounds just shy of the 30. Brian Atkinson over there gets nine yards to bring up second and one with 32 seconds left. Let's see what the flag is. James Hawkins smart enough to get out of bounds. I tell you, everything's gone wrong for. Northern Illinois in this first half. This is one they'd like to put behind them and forget. Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report with Matt Weiner is coming up next. Let's see what's going on in college football today. Some of the surprises. Let's see how some of the other MAC teams are doing. Second and two. Harris, across the middle, drops. A lot of real estate in front of Cornelius McBrady if he hangs on to the football. And will stop the clock with 29 seconds left and bring up third and short. I'll tell you, the reason why Bowling Green, they're having so much success in the passing game is because you go four and five wide receivers, you better match them in per terms of personnel defensively with defensive backs. And right now, they're keeping linebackers on the field like Brian Atkinson trying to cover slot receivers. They catch the ball. They're just pulling away from Northern Illinois defenders. Here's Harris. First down. Harris inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. He gets 13. 23 seconds. He'll take the timeout. Akeel Grant hit him low. Well, if you're looking at some optimism for Joe Novak and his Huskies. Consider this, they are a team at their best when they are behind. However, they have not been behind by this kind of number. Yeah, I don't know if they've been down this much, but that is, that's huge right there. Six out of the seven wins that they have have been come from behind victories. So you can't, co can't count them out. He's a fabulous coach at halftime in terms of going into the locker room, making adjustments, and coming out playing well in the second half. So Northern Illinois, don't count them out yet.
Novak has posted in the locker room, those who stay will be champions. He is built with high school kids, not JUCOs. Demands 100% classroom attendance, and those who don't show up for class get a little conditioning. <laughs> a lot of conditioning. A little early morning conditioning. Huh? The BCS standings brought to you by Allstate. Here's how they look. What a surprise. This is going to change because Virginia Tech will go up to West Virginia and uh, take one on the chin. I'll tell you, when you and I were in Blacksburg a couple of weeks ago and they rolled it up on Syracuse. Yes. I, 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 I was I, already I, under the impression, wait till Miami comes in here. It's going to be for the marbles and this, that, and the other. And wow, they go to West Virginia and just <laughs> make it work. Well, you and I had Texas earlier in the season and they got rolled by Oklahoma. I didn't think they'd get beat that bad. <laughs> Oklahoma's a pretty good football team. Not a bad team. Pretty good team. Josh Harris now has 2,005 rushing yards for a career. 17 first downs for Bowling Green, three for Northern Illinois. First down with 23 seconds left. Harris quickly, and it is caught by James Hawkins. Hawkins stops the clock as he is run out of bounds after a gain of four, bring up second and six, 19 seconds left. Well, I like the job in this drive. Not a whole lot of time, but they're working the perimeter, working the outside edges of the defense where they can get quick passes to guys. They can get up the field, get some positive yards, step out of bounds, and then save that clock. This is plenty of time for Bowling Green to go ahead and go at the end zone a couple of shots. Andre, they've really kept Northern Illinois off balance. They've really have. Running the ball and passing it. And deployed. defensively, they've changed up some things, showing some zones, some man, some blitzes. Just a good overall job of coaching. Second down for Harris. Swings it out. Left side, P.J. Pope. And Pope out of bounds. Hickenbottom is over there, the free safety, and no game. 12 seconds left. Third down, an interesting call coming up here for Bowling Green. What do you do? Do you, do you, do go, you go to the, the end zone? I think you got to take a shot to try to get some points. I think a safe shot, though, where either your receiver's going to catch it or no one catches it. Then if you miss it, you come back on fourth down, you kick a field goal and go into halftime. Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report with Matt Weiner. About 12 game seconds away. Harris going back the other way and too long for Craig Jarrett and that will bring up fourth down I tell you what they had it set up for Craig Harris Jarrett the uh, tight end the only receiver to that formation tight end tight to the line of scrimmage and they're gonna set a screen up and he had a couple of guys out in front of him that were ready to block block and try to get him into the end zone here you see Josh Harris just try to get the defense flowing one way, and look at all that room back to the other side of the formation for Craig Jarrett if he's just able to catch the football. Sean Swisha from 32 yards. He's already hit from 31. And this one is no good. So Northern Illinois survives this drive, at least by Bowling Green. And we are closing in on halftime. So Matt Weiner is a, a few seconds away. I, I think if somebody would have told us at the outset of this game that we'd be seeing a 24-3 contest with Bowling Green leading at this point, we all would have been greatly surprised because it is Northern Illinois undefeated, 10th in the BCS poll and 14th in our, our uh, USA Today ESPN poll. I knew revenge would take a, a be a factor in this football game for Bowling Green, having gone in 8-0 last year to Northern Illinois, but they did a fabulous job in the first half. Joe Novak wants to talk with Ray Vaughn, our referee, but it's all Falcons over the Huskies. Let's go to Matt Weiner for our halftime update. Hi, uh, guys. The number two offense in the country showing off today as Bowling Green has the big win. Miami looking to make that MAC championship game from the east side. They have to keep on winning, and Michigan could be in first place all by themselves by this time next week. The Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report is fueled by the newly redesigned 2004 Pontiac Grand Prix. Fuel for the soul. Well, the Huskies of Northern Illinois have 
come from behind to win six of their seven games this season. They've got their work cut out for them down 21 at Bowling Green. And hi, everyone. Welcome into the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. We start in the Big Ten. Michigan in third place to start the day, but by this time next week could be all by themselves leading the conference. First, they would have to take out Purdue and Michigan State next week, the only two remaining unbeatens on the schedule. We start in Ann Arbor. Purdue last beat the Wolverines in Ann Arbor in 1966. Bob Greasy quarterbacking the team then. First quarter, Michigan already up 7-0. Steve Breston on the reverse, 21 yards for the touch, making a 14-0 lead. Same score, John Navarre hit by Sean Phillips, who pounces on it. Can the Boilers cash in? Kyle Orton out of the pocket, rolling right, evading tacklers, finally heaving it and picked up. Leon Hall does the honor, just his third interception of the season for Orton, Michigan leading. Wisconsin on the road at Northwestern. Badgers unbeaten away from Madison this season. First quarter, third and nine. Brett Bozanet to Jason Wright. And there goes Wright, 53 yards for the touch. Wildcats up 6-0 after they missed the kick. Third quarter, 9-7 game now. Wright tweaks the ankle after the lineman falls on him. Helped off, he would return to the game later, later in the third quarter. Noah Heron filling in nicely. Right side. Near the goal line, set up, Jason Wright. Two plays, one yard touch, Northwestern pulls the upset, 16 to seven. Ohio State just their second road game of the season. They went to Bloomington, Indiana. Lido Ross and Maurice Hall averaging 3.4 yards a carry this season coming into this one. Compare that to Maurice Corrette's 5-6 last year, but Ross had a big day. The 11 yard touchdown run, and when you run it, you set up the play action. Craig Krenzel to Drew Carter. Leto Ross punched in that one as well. Make it 14 0. Then it's Krenzel to Santonio Holmes. Big day for Holmes. Touchdown there. 35 6. Buckeyes Cruz. Penn State on the road at Iowa. Joe Paterno, rough week for him, suspending his leading receiver, Tony Johnson. But his Nittany Lions came out on D. Nathan Chandler on the screen pass through right to Yakov Israel, who takes it 82 yards the other way. Nittany winds up 7 0. Second quarter, Chandler to Warren Holloway, left sideline. Hawkeyes get a two yard touchdown pass on another Chandler throw, so it's 7 6. Then Iowa blocks the punt. Special teams, Chad Greenway blocks it. Jameer Roberts returns it for the TD. Hawkeyes at 19 7. They hang on to win it. 26-14. Minnesota, big winner at Illinois, 36-10. Assad Abdul Khalik, 237 and three touchdowns for the Golden Gophers. So here are your Big Ten standings. And as I mentioned, Michigan could be on top this time next week. Michigan State off this week. They get the Wolverines next Saturday. Purdue trailing at Michigan as we speak. Ohio State, Michigan could wind up atop the Big Ten again seven days from right now. Pac-10 ball, USC at Washington. The Trojans haven't won since 1993, but Matt Leiner to carry Colbert for the TD catch, seven all game. Cody Pickett intercepted, and you're so not catching Ronald Dunn. He'll score it. Trojans up 14-7. Second quarter, same score, UC, USC ball, and they give it to the freshman. Pitch it to Lendale White. Green acres for him. And SC up to 26-14. Another lackluster effort from Georgia. Underwhelming and beating UAB 16-13. This game tied at 13 in the third quarter. This after scraping by against Bandy last week. Tennessee in a must-win at Alabama. Trailing 6-3. Another low-scoring game in the SEC. You see Casey Clawson, 122 on the ground. And the volunteer ground game not really getting it going either. Big night around the SEC. We've got a couple of them here. Arkansas and Ole Miss right here on ESPN2. That's 7.15 Eastern time kickoff as Arkansas tries to add a two-game losing streak. And Auburn unbeaten in the SEC West on the road at LSU. That's at 7.45 Eastern time. And here is that SEC West as it stands. Auburn 4-0 on top. Ole Miss also unbeaten. LSU obviously needs to keep on winning to stay in the race.
This halftime report is fueled by Pontiac. Vote for this week's ultimate Pontiac high-performance play at ESPN.com slash Pontiac. Oklahoma State up big in College Station. 28-0 in that one. Tatum Bell, who had a huge day against Texas Tech, has gone for 147, a couple of touchdowns already in the Cowboys. With a big advantage in total yards and on the scoreboard down in Texas. Nebraska at home against Iowa State. First quarter, Nebraska going forward on fourth down. Jamal Lohr takes it himself, two yards. Oscar's up 7-0 later in the first. On the reverse, Isaiah Fluin. About 39-yard touchdown. Make it 14-zip NU. Still in the first quarter. Iowa State punting. Not so much. Blocked by Don Denario or Demoria Williams, excuse me, Josh Bullocks returns it for the touchdown. Huskers sent block punt block of the day, and they win it 28-0. Homecoming at Missouri, Texas Tech in town. Always a show. Brad Smith putting on a show of his own. The keeper there following closely. There he goes. 27 yards, 34-10, Mizzou up. But remember, Texas Tech came back from 27 down to make a game of it in Stillwater last week, so not too safe. Smith again, 41 yards, scrambling. 55-31 at that point. On the fourth, Tigers trying to work the clock, protect that lead, and it's Smith one more time. On the play fake, reverses course down the left sideline. 291 yards rushing. That's a Big 12 record for quarterbacks. And Mizzou doubles up the Red Raiders 62 to 31. ACC ball, Florida State number five in your BCS standings. Bobby Bowden, number one on the all-time wins list. Tied with Joe Paterno as the day began. And he could take it over for himself for the win against Wake Forest. Leon Washington helping the cause. 65 yards in the punt return. Knowles up by 10. Second quarter, Chris Ricks looking for Crow. Rafonzo Thorpe got him. 25-yard pitch and catch. Florida State up 27-14, that one in the third quarter. Irish making their final trip to Chestnut Hill till 2008. I Willingham, this team 4-7 since the loss to BC last year. Fourth quarter, 24-19. Notre Dame blocks the punt. Carlos Campbell scoops it 25 yards for the score. Notre Dame up 25-24, but BC drives it. San Rose Scortino, 26-yard field goal. That's your game winners. BC takes it 27-25. Pittsburgh wins it 34-14. Larry Fitzgerald ties the NCAA record for consecutive games with a touchdown catch. More here after the break. Football and in life, experience is the best teacher. Luckily, the best experience I'm getting in college is the NIU experience. I'm studying with dedicated professors in a program that's nationally ranked, and I'm applying what I learned to real-world business issues. So when I leave NIU with my degree in accountancy, I'll be a top recruit for companies that value real-world know-how. Get a step ahead. Get the NIU experience. Wrapping it up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, you're watching the Mac West leaders, Northern Illinois and Bowling Green, Miami, trying to keep things together on the east side, remain unbeaten, taking on Kent State. Look at the catch by Antoine Smith. 39 yards for a spectacular touchdown. That cuts the Miami lead to 17-14. Ben Roethlisberger to Ryan Bussing deep into Kent State territory, sets up. Roethlisberger just hands it off this time, Calvin Murray. Miami up 24-14 at half. That's a 24-20 game now. Marshall into Kalamazoo, take on Western Michigan. 7-0 early, thundering herd. Butchie Wallace, 26 yards, ties it up at seven. Same score still in the first, it's Stan Hill looking for his man, Darius Watts, and he's got him, nine yard touchdown strike. Making a seven point herd lead again. Now 17-7 in the second, Hill has time, has Josh Davis. And 55-yard gain sets up another touch, 24-7 Marshall at that point. Get you back out to Bowling Green after the break. It's go time. The beasts of the East meet the best of the West 
for one. Final showdown in the MAC football championship game. Don't miss any of the hard hitting, high flying, head turning, helmet crashing action. Be a part of the MAC football championship experience. Log on to MAC-Sports.com for more information. The MAC football championship game. It's time to represent. And welcome back at Bowling Green. A dominant first half performance by the Falcons who lead number 14, Northern Illinois, by three touchdowns. And one of the unbeatens is in deep, deep trouble here, guys. This is as dominant a first half as we've seen in any conference in a long time. More on that in a second. Meanwhile, the other afternoon games around the country, Boston College Notre Dame reminded me of the most famous game in the series, probably 1993, which was a heartbreaking loss for Notre Dame on a last second field goal. Well, you know what happened? Notre Dame lost the national title because of that ball game. You got to give Boston College's coach Tom O'Brien a lot of credit. This is his third win over the Irish three in a row and the way they did it was spectacular they almost lost it with a block punt on special teams and then kirk they come back with a great punt return and i mean a kickoff return and then a, oh and then they and a great win for boston college <laughs> and notre dame goes ah I'm excited about that yeah, big field goal clutch <laughs> performance for tom o'brien the game that has stood out to me so far is what michigan's been able to do on defense against purdue interesting last week we watched purdue throw the football 31 times underneath Wisconsin soft coverage. Michigan must have looked at that tape. They've walked their corners right up to the line of scrimmage and have really put a lot of pressure on those Purdue receivers. They can't get off press coverage, and Michigan right now dominating that football game. And Bowling Green dominating this football oh. game here. 17-3 in first downs, more than 370 total yards, about 53 for Northern. This is not Northern's game coming from behind Oh, here. no question. And let me tell you, I was very impressed on the sideline with the strategy that Bowling Green came out they come out smoking Kirk they had different formations they put different men in motion they threw screens and draw wow that was an impressive performance by Bowling Green I think we realized coming in how good Bowling yep. Green's offense uh, could be but seeing it especially the first couple drives boom 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 the execution yep. flawless Josh Harris gets all the credit but I'll tell you what he's got some weapons to throw the football to Charles Sharon Cole oh. Magner these guys can make plays on the outside great quickness one, great thing, also, the defense. I, one thing also I could see why they only lost to Ohio State yeah yeah, I, I vote in the AP poll. If Bring this up. keeps up, they're going to be voted a good team. top 15 for sure. For Back you. to Jeff and Andre inside. All right, thank you, Chris. We get ready. College football, second half from Bowling Green, Ohio. Northern Illinois, unbeaten, 10th in the BCS, 14th in the USA Today ESPN poll. Andre Ware having one heck of a tough time with Josh Harris to find quarterback for the Falcons. Yeah, they can't seem to get a, a handle on Josh Harris. Had a fantastic first half, but defensively as well for Bowling Green. Just total dominance across the board. Even in the special teams, Charles Sharon, the uh, return man for, for Bowling Green, had a, a huge return. So just across the board, everywhere for Bowling Green, just total dominance. The numbers on Josh Harris, 17 for 28, 279 yards. Two touchdowns and two pass interceptions. And those are huge numbers against a team as good as Northern Illinois. Yeah, when everything breaks down, he pulls it down, makes plays with his legs as well. So a two-dimensional player that, uh, that makes that Bowling Green offense run. Better pick by Sean Sweeshin. And here it is. Some room for Northern Illinois. It's a return of 31 yards. And now Joe Novak's team down 24 to 3 as we begin the second half. He says he's old school. He likes his football good and dull. But when you're down this many That's points, right. you got to do more than run the football. You got to go away from what you're used to doing, running the football with Michael Turner. Now you got to turn Josh Haldy and loose and help him to get going offensively, find some rhythm in the passing game, and that's going to loosen things up for Michael Turner. Turner 13 carries 48 yards. Here's Hardy, and it is caught just short of the first down, a pickup of about nine and a half for Sam Hurd. Out of San Antonio, Texas, the wide receiver, sophomore, he gets nine and a half. Well, what they do here is they're, they're smart with him. They've been getting a lot of pressure through the middle of the formation in blitzes, so they, rose, they roll Josh Hardy outside of the pocket and allow him to make some throws. Get him a little comfortable throw there. Throw him a bone early. Really, it's settled in. Important to get something established here. That's by right. The Huskers. On the ground, Michael Turner, first down. 
Turner. And the ball in green territory. Tackle by Keon Newsom. A great job by Turner. He gets 22 yards. The ESPN2 game track, the first half. Josh Harris went crazy going up top there for the touchdown. Everything he did was right. In the air, on the ground, finding room. Meanwhile, Michael Turner, the Heisman candidate known as the burner. They call him the sauce. Well, Michael the Great really kept in check. But not here in the third quarter. Turner again, and this time not much. He gets about three yards and bring up second and seven. Matt Leininger is there. Here's Jimmy Dykes downstairs. Guys, I talked with both head coaches as they went into that locker room, and Greg Brandon from Bowling Green said a couple of things. He said, first of all, we're as well prepared for this ball game as any game we've played. Defensively, Northern Illinois made no changes. We kept in a rhythm the entire first half. I then asked Joe Novak, "Are you? is your confidence still where it was to start this ball game? He said, absolutely. We've been down before. We will come back again. He then walked away and looked back, and he said, but they are pretty good. They are indeed. Michael Turner. Brought down at the 30-yard line by Jansen Patton. A nice tackle. And that's again a four. Boy, Jansen Patton's had a, a whale of a ball game thus far. Starts the second half just like he finished the first half. Two interceptions in the first half. Pretty good football player there. And just giving the Northern Illinois offense headaches. Comes up and makes a one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. With Michael Turner. Not a lot of guys, especially defensive backs, can boast about that. Two for seven on third down conversion. Paldy in trouble. And he is sacked. Monty Cooley was there. Fourth sack of the ball game. First for Cooley. And it'll bring up fourth down and 12. Yeah, he made his first start last last week against, uh, excuse me, last earlier this year against Eastern Kentucky. But, uh, boy, just a fabulous job of trailing Josh Haldy, getting to him inside move and just not stopping until you get the quarterback on the ground. And they just defensively have all the right. It's like they have their playbook or they can hear the plays being called. Yeah. And after the Gallagher. It's Charles Sharon deep. High punt angling towards the sideline. Yeah, let's see where they mark it. Yeah, at about the 15-yard line. That is where Bowling Green will get the football after the 25-yard punt. Up 24-3. Bowling Green takes over with the lead on Northern Illinois. We've got the longest active Mac home winning streak for 10 games. They've averaged almost 52 points per game here at home since the streak began two years ago. On the ground, not much for P.J. Pope, who runs into Vincent Reynolds, the left end, loss of two. And a look at Greg Brennan. Played football in high school for Gary Barnett, who's now the Colorado coach, at Air Academy High School outside of Colorado Springs. And then, of course, he was on his staff at Northwestern and in Colorado. And he took over here for Urban Meyer, who... Brought in a lot of discipline and talking with Josh Harris, he said, Coach Brandon's a little more laid back. We needed what Urban Meyer brought in, but now we need what Coach Brandon has, a little more laid back attitude, but they play hard for him. Second and long, Harris wide open, nice strike. The catch is made by Magner. And Magner taken out of bounds in front of the Bowling Green bench by Randy Drew, a 35-yard pickup and a first down. Boy, what a throw and a catch by receiver and quarterback Josh Harris and Cole Magner. I mean, he comes in on a on a in route and just waits it out. That's Josh Harris, you see it from his point of view. It's Cole Magner on a crossing route and he's able to get this thing all the way out the back door and turn up the field for some additional yardage. But boy, what accuracy by Josh Harris. Now over 300 yards on the afternoon, 18 and 29, two interceptions, two touchdowns. On the ground in the Northern Illinois Territory is P.J. Pope. Stopped by Akeel Grant. Gets four yards. It'll bring up second and six. Thank Harris you. has been tutored by a fine quarterbacks coach in Mick McCall, who was at Wyoming a year ago. Before that was a terrific quarterback in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference in Southern Colorado. And they know how to throw it a little bit at, at Wyoming. And he's coming here and he's settled Josh down, got his technique right. He's gotten a lot more accurate. 
confidence is way up in this offense. On second and seven, across the middle, wide open is Charles Sherrod. Down at the 40-yard line, nine yards, and another first down. Now it's just a matter for Josh Harris. He's settled in pretty good. He's got a rhythm, a feel at that position throwing the football. Defensively, Northern Illinois, I, I mentioned it earlier, they're keeping guys like Strohman and Atkinson, linebackers, on the football field to try to match up with these slot receivers, and they just can't stay with them. Setting up the screen. Deflected, and maybe saved a big gain was Quince Holman from Woodbridge, Illinois. He's a sophomore, the right end. You know, when I, when I was in college and we ran an offense similar, we had four wide receivers all the time throwing the football. If you came into a game and you saw where defense was going to keep a certain personnel on the football field, I mean, your eyes got big, <laughs> mouth started watering, couldn't wait to, to get from one play to the next. And that is exactly how Josh Harris feels right now. He looks out there and sees those extra linebackers and not defensive backs. Boy, he is just having fun, just playing pitch and catch right now. That was a look at Mick McCall, fine quarterback's coach. And here's Harris, he'll keep it. Up the middle, diving to the 30-yard line. And the ball is loose. So Northern Illinois him. says they have it. But they're, they're going to rule him down. One official saying that he was down. And he's got a spot, the lines judge. I saw the mo well. Maybe I'm wrong. And Northern Illinois gets the turnover. Maybe he gets overruled. I know I saw one official point that he was on the ground. They're going to talk about it. The lines judge here. Here you see Josh Harris there. He's on the ground. Then the ball comes out, and it's a correct call if they indeed rule that he was down. What do you think? Now looking at it, it's kind of moving around. Uh, can't cause a fumble, right? <laughs> so they tell me. They're talking about it an awfully long time. They're going to give it back to Bowling Green, it looks like. Which I think is the right decision. The player is ruled down on the field. Third down. No home cooking there? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Spices thrown in. <laughs> and some, and some, dish. Yeah, and some sides. <laughs> and a little dessert. <laughs> yes, indeed. Bowling Green has 20 first downs in this game. Northern Illinois has four. And look at Joe Novak. Joe Novak's a little bit upset. Get a line judge to that side. But here, it's close. I mean, he's on his way down, trying to break, break his fall, and then the ball comes out. I, I, think, I think he's down. I really do. And the call's been made already, so. He just needs something positive. That's why he's so upset, Coach Novak. He needs something positive to happen for his football team. Right now, it's just not happening. Seventh play of the drive coming up. First down, Josh Harris. Here comes the blitz. On the ground. Hope Stockland to the 22. And Novak, if you gamble, even if it's a blitz and they run the football, with Pope, all he's got to do is get past that first wave, and then he's into the secondary. And it's going to be a big game. Boy, he's had a pretty good first half himself of running the football, and they've done a good job of play calling, mixing the run with the pass, and then all of a sudden you sprinkle Josh Harris in on a quarterback draw. Good good job of play calling. Yards for play. Three. First down. That's P.J. Pope. He gets eight. And another first down, tackled by Brian Atkinson. We just mentioned running the football and, and keeping Northern Illinois off balance. When you think they're going to throw, they run. When they guess and think they're going to run, they throw the football. And well, they have just been right on time in terms of play calling, not only offensively, on the defensive side of it as well for Bowling Green. Hope again. And gets some yardage there. About four yards this time. Vincent Reynolds 
the senior from Detroit, Michigan, the left end on the tackle. It's been a treat to watch Josh Harris operate this offense and do the things he, that uh, I asked him who he was most comfortable with. Is it Coach Brandon or Coach Urban Meyer? When he left, he said, you know, it, I just kind of grown over the le over the uh, the past year and enjoy Coach Brandon being here and, and just his calm resolve and keeping everybody calm in, in stressful situations. Here's the pitch. And fine defense. Akeel Grant was there to make the tackle on P.J. Pope. Akeel Grant. And let's go to Jimmy Dykes downstairs. Hey, guys, last year, Bowling Green led the nation in red zone efficiency, scoring 61 out of 63 times, 97%. This year, the numbers are down just a little bit. But after their first four games, they had an off week, and they went back and said, what did we do well last year inside the red zone? They decided they ran the ball, and they said their game plan coming in now is 90% of the time to run the ball inside the red zone. They've been awfully good the last two weeks. Well, let's see how they do here. On third and seven, over shoots the target. Charles Sharon was out there, and good coverage by Hansbrough. Is that true? I mean, some teams get too tricky inside the red zone. They, they try to get too complicated. Uh, sometimes you're rewarded for doing what you do relatively well. well you, you go away from your bread and butter and what you had some success with, basically because you think everybody's figured you out. And uh, Bowling Green, they go back to what they were used to doing, is running the football down there. There you saw a pass, but characteristic of them to just run the football with Josh Harrison and P.J. Polk. John Swisham, a 28-yard field goal attempt. And it is good. 31,007 here, enjoying this one. Coming up, a date of infamy for the match. The yard line, and that's where Northern Illinois will take over. A return of 27 yards. Back here in Bowling Green, Ohio, 27-3. Falcons are leading the Huskies. And Northern Illinois with the ball at their 40-yard line. How do they get back in this thing? How do they stem what has been an onslaught from Bowling Green? Well, now you have to almost run your way back into it. They've, they've tried to pass the football. They've tried to run it. Now you go back to your bread and butter with Michael Turner and, and see if you can get him on track. Here's Holding. Rifling the ball into his target at the 48. P.J. Fleck, fine grab. He is from Sugar Grove, Illinois. Kian Newsom was there for Bowling Green. Gets about nine, maybe eight and a half yards. Now they go right into the hurry up offense, trying to generate some points here fast. Get a rhythm, getting some type of rhythm here offensively. And maybe the two minute offense is the way to do it. All the is a winner. 15 and four as a starter. They'll keep it on the ground. Michael Turner. It's run out of bounds in front of the Northern Illinois bench. And he gets seven yards. Leininger, the defensive tackle. Now they got to find a way to get him involved, whether it's screens, a couple of draw plays. Uh, however, you got to get him the football. That's your best player on offense. He and P.J. Fleck, he's been quiet as well. Once he threw the interception on the kind of the uh, wide receiver pass, they really hadn't gone back to him as well. So those two guys got to step up for Northern Illinois. Here comes the pressure, Haldy in trouble, and brought down! Penalty marker by the face mask, Mitch Hewitt. Got his hand on Haldy's face mask. That looked like that hurt. <laughs> it does hurt. Your, uh, your head turns all the way around. Ouch. And a face mask against Bowling Green's Hewitt. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio for an update. Matt. All right, guys, it's uh, Miami leading at Kent State, but back come the golden flashes. Joshua Cribs and Nadja Bruton. Look at him just rip, give me that thing. Rips it away. And the flash is on top by three with 10 and change left. All right, more Mac football. The country that goes against the Falcons. Here you see Mitch Hewitt just grab a hold of that face mask. Oh, oh that's got to hurt. Let's, I need a rub down tomorrow. <laughs> May not feel that one right now, but tomorrow morning, we will feel that 
a force putting his head on the swivel. And Turner taken out of bounds by Jason Horton. He gets two yards. Sunday night, Priest Holmes, Dante Hall, and the rest of those Kansas City Chiefs. What a team they are right now. They take on the Bills. And it's Sunday night at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Available nationwide on ESPN HD. Starts with NFL Primetime. Brought to you by Miller Lite at 7.30 Eastern. You've seen the Chiefs. You got them against the Texans. And Dick Vermeil's done an amazing job. Talk about a guy who has a great touch with football players. Boy, they, they have a fabulous offensive unit. Priest Holmes, Johnny Morton, Eddie Kinnison. Then you throw in Tony Gonzalez. And they are special. Frank 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 That's yeah. right. A lot of weapons for Frank Grant. On second and seven, here's Holden. Going long, wide open, Holden shoots his target. Chaton Powers was wide open, and it was too long for him. Boy, he had him wide open, put a little bit too much air under the football. He drills this one more on the line, lead him into the middle of the field. Here the free safety is out of the middle. You see him working left, and he comes right over the top and just overshoots his receiver. He's been off the mark, 5 of 11, only 40 yards and an interception. He's had some guys open. Had a concussion two weeks ago. Here he is on third down, in trouble. And brought down by Mike Thaler. Loses about a yard. Where are the thunder sticks? They're, they're in a situation now where they need points every drive. So on the, here they're going to go for it on fourth down. But they have got to get in. Time's running down about five minutes left in the third quarter. They have got to put points on the board. Field goals will not do it. They've got to have touchdowns. All right, here's fourth and eight. You see the fourth down conversions. They've been pretty good. Holiday with time. And... It's going to be a pass interference at the 15-yard line. P.J. Fleck was held. I think they're going, to, they're going to get the first down here, and this drive is going to continue for Northern Illinois. He gets held, beats his guy inside. He's trying to get vertical down the field. It's going to result in a first down for, for Northern Illinois. Holding on a defense, 10 yards from the previous spot, Automatic first down. It's a pretty good look at it. P.J. Fleck here working inside, trying to get vertical. Then all of a sudden, Keon Newsom grabs him. He's, he knows he's beat. He grabs a hold of P.J. Fleck. P.J.'s asking for the flag, too. It's become a tradition that Fleck, after victory, sings the fight song in the Husky locker room. <laughs> They like to warm up his vocal cords, I'm sure, but there's a lot of work in front of him. A lot of work left in this. On first down from the 20. Holiday rolling, throwing, and completing to keep Perry. Well, that was a well-designed play. A little play action. It comes underneath to Keith Perry, a big guy, 6'3", 214-pound receiver. Toledo lost today. So that's a look at the max standings in the West. Right, we may just have a, an interchanging right there with Bowling Green and Northern Illinois. But, uh, Northern Illinois fight back in the red zone. Well, that tells you that this was a huge game going in. That's right. And even more so now. Here's Haldy with time. And into the end zone. And it's caught by Chaton Powers. Touchdown. A 10-yard strike. Oh, what a fantastic job by Josh Haldy of working in the pocket. Everything breaks down around you. You move your feet, slide, buy yourself a little more time. He's heads up, keeps his eyes down the field, and is able to find Chaton Powers. Here, just work in the pocket, work it, keep the ball up, deliver it on the move. Oh. And, boy, what a well-thrown football and a good catch there as well by Chaton Powers. That's Steve Azar, the master of the PAT. And it is good. So he has 50 consecutive point afters. And one of the fine kickers in all of college football. Well, Northern Illinois fighting back. Now down 17 here in the third. ESPN2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. 
and by Hummer. Check out the new H2 at Hummer.com. Hummer, like nothing else. Late fall afternoon in Bowling Green, Ohio. Their Falcons are leading the Huskies. Northern Illinois, but here comes the Huskies. Clawing and scratching, trying to get back into this football game. Steve Azar kicking off. Uh, pretty good kick, second by Jansen Pat. That bouncing off one set of tacklers. And another late penalty marker at the 26-yard line. There's a flag down. Return of 15 yards. The penalties on that last drive. Going against Bowling Green, uh, the penalties are starting to hurt him. I mean, that's that was the difference in the last drive. Well, let's go back to maybe the best day in MAC history. September 20th, Marshall over Kansas State. That got everybody's attention. Bob Pruitt has done such a fine job there. Then at Tuscaloosa before 80,000. Northern Illinois over the Crimson Tide. Yet it was Pitt ranked 11th. Toledo and Tom Amstutz found their way to a victory. September 20th will long be remembered by those who follow the MAC as a day of infamy. That's right, four and one that day, and I think the only hiccup may have been uh, Bowling Green, Ohio State. And they only lost to the Buckeyes by a touchdown and had a chance late in that ball game also. That's right. But big series of downs here for Northern Illinois. They're gonna try to get back in this football game. You like the field position if you're Northern Illinois. Protect it if you're Bowling Green. The football, that is. On first down, the handoff is to DJ Pope. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now in our studio. Matt. Hi, right, Jeff. Let's get another update on that Miami Kent State game. We saw, showed you the Golden Flashes touchdown. Miami answers with an 80 yard drive. Ben Roethlisberger to Martin Nance. Miami back on top by right four. Mac games always seem to be pretty wild, don't they? <laughs> Fantastic finishes, that's for sure. I did the Mac championship game last year with Toledo and Marshall. It's great. One, yeah. one of the really terrific football games last year. We're going to have another one right here. Second and eight. On the ground. Here's P.J. Pope. Pope first down. And run out of bounds. Nice job by Pope. Knocked down by Akeel Grant. It's a 14-yard game. Let's go to Jimmy Dykes downstairs. Guys, I'm with Matt Commissioner Rick Chris, and there's five different bowl reps here today. What does that do for your league? Oh, the, all the attention on this game. You guys being here, game day, the bowl reps, it, it shines so much of a spotlight. It's very exciting for us. Now, if by chance Northern Illinois was to play their way into a BCS, $13.8 million is their take home, but you all don't even have a plan in place to distribute it. What will happen? Well, we got a long way to go before that, but I'm sure we'll get several suggestions. It'd be a good argument to have. All right. Good to see you today. Thanks, Jimmy. <laughs> all right, guys. It's a good problem to have. It's good to be commissioner of the map. That's right. Good days right now to be commissioner. On first down. Uh, nothing doing for Pope. As he runs into a wall of white jerseys, he gets about a yard. I'll tell you what, the enthusiasm for game day with Chris, and Lee, and Kirk it was just awesome yesterday. And today, standing in the rain, there are more students packed around than uh, than you really could imagine at a school like this. Couldn't wait to get uh, get this one started. Everybody out there with their hard hats on and ready to go to work and cheer their team on to victory here. Bowling Green, but boy, they are in a dogfight here in the second half of this football game. Second and nine. Harris in trouble. On the run. And does the right thing. Another example of his decision making, how really impeccable it has been, not only in this game, but, but really all season long. He really has. And I mean, he does a fabulous job of keeping his eyes down the field and allowing his receivers to work for him until the last possible moment and then he pulls it down when everything else around him is is not working receivers aren't open blocking starting to break down pulls it down and runs he gets his team four yards and moves the chains There's five and nine on third down conversion facing the third and six here comes the blitz harris gets rid of it it's complete catch made by pj pope 
And Pope to the 45-yard line. He gets 18 yards. Move those chains. The beast, Brian Atkinson, makes the tackle. He's from Chicago. Boy, he just has made them pay every time they blitz off the edge. Josh Harris picks it up and boom, right underneath to, the, to his blitz adjustment, P.J. Pope. And then we've seen that play more than one time when P.J. Pope comes out the backside of it for big, big yardage from Bowling Green. Pope has five captains and 82 yards, as you can see. Play action for Harris. He wants it all. Up top catch. Charles Sharon, touchdown Falcons. That is what an experienced, patient quarterback will do for a football team. Right there. They show play action pass and they get Charles Sharon the one on one on the outside. And boy, Josh Harris makes some pain. 55 yards for Charles Sharon. Second touchdown of the game. So every time Northern Illinois trying to find their way back into this ball game, they run into Josh Harris. And Shisham's point after attempt is good. What a great throw. Look, what a well-thrown ball. Just using the eyes. Puts nice air under the football, and Charles Sharon right underneath it for a touchdown for Bowling Green. Charles Sharon enjoying a big afternoon. He has five receptions, 115 yards, and two touchdowns. And you see the scoring drive. He's throwing a big punt return that he had as well. He's having a pretty good day. He's out of Florida. And here is Deshaun. Here's Drew. And spun down at the 25-yard line. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now. Matt. All right, USC, one of the teams that figures to move up in the rankings and the BCS standings after that Virginia Tech loss. Matt Leinert, Brandon Hancock, 52 yards. Leinert thrown for 316, and the Trojans have a 36-17 lead in Seattle. Good-looking football team. They really are. And I was surprised early when they lost in the season, but Matt Leinert has done a fabulous job of replacing Carson Palmer. Josh Hawley on first down. Rolling. And hit! Brought down by Javon Burks, the middle linebacker. He gets the sack, and it's loss of six. Boy, he's got a lot of speed. They play him inside this year. Last year, he played outside. But uh, Josh Hawley, he's got he's to get rid of this football. I mean, they get called for holding here. But you're trying to protect it as well. But in the passing game, nothing's there. Go ahead, throw it away. You can't take sacks. You won't move your football team if you continue to take sacks. Go ahead, here you see him just outside the pocket. There, don't take that hit. Go ahead, throw the football away. Come back again on second down. You're second and 10 as opposed to second down and 16. Burke's really showing great speed there. Yeah. Just blew by everybody. There's Thunder Sticks out of Central High School in Detroit, Michigan. Former territory of, of yours uh, in the NFL. Passed through there a few times. Second and 16. Holly, and it's complete good pass. As Powers makes the grab, and he has enough for the first down. Gain of 18. We are in Bowling Green, Ohio, Dwight Perry Stadium, 31,007, the second largest crowd ever at Bowling Green. Number 14, Northern Illinois, taking on a tough Bowling Green team with only one loss. I'm Jeff Hellinger with Andre Ware and Jimmy Dykes. And it's been all Falcons today. Here's Holly, and it's great. At the 43 yard line, Powers again making the grab. He gets five yards. Jelani Jordan, left cornerback from Atlanta, sophomore, 5'10, a 175 pounder. See, there's the difference. When you look at Bowling Green across the board, they've got defensive backs in on slot receivers, one or two linebackers in the game. They can match personnel. When you flip the other side, Northern Illinois going with a lot of linebackers. Holdy again, and it is again, it is caught by Powers. So three in a row, and he has enough for the first down. Gets about seven yards. Tonight, ESPN and ESPN2. Some great SEC action. 7.15 Eastern on ESPN2. Ole Miss, number 20, Arkansas. Then at ESPN at 7.45 Eastern, Auburn, ranked number 21, will take on number nine, LSU. 
College football Saturday on ESPN. Every game is a must win. There's first down for Halden. In trouble. And just throwing the football away. And that's what he's got to do. When things break down around you, sometimes you can't make plays. Sometimes, you know, the other guy, they're, they're supposed to cover and play well on defense too at times. So it's not there. You've got to throw it away and come back the next down and fight instead of taking sacks and keeping your team in long yardage situations. All the 10 to 17, 91 yards, one touchdown, uh, one pass interception. Second down, 10. Second down. Aldi going long, and it is caught! The catch made by P.J. Black, touchdown Huskies! Boy, they say he is a Belitnikoff clone. I don't, but he I don't remember Belitnikoff running that <laughs> That's right. Way. He's got a little more speed than uh, Freddie Beat did. <laughs> oh, my 50-yard touchdown. Whoa! Came into this game with four touchdown catches. Boy, is it too late? That's the question. No, I don't think so. I think it's plenty of time left on the clock. You know, a minute here in the third quarter and 15 more in the fourth. They, they can strike quick. They can just control the football. Don't make big mistakes. They're going to go for two here. Yeah. Call a timeout. Come over and talk to Joe Novick. But they've got to show the ability to stop Josh Harris. Well, I mean, they do. That, that's I mean, that's key. where it all if, starts. If they're going to, you know, exchange touchdowns here. Then they won't get back in it, <laughs> you know, naturally trying to match it point for point. But they have Bowling Green in situations earlier in that, the, the uh, previous drive for Bowling Green. They had them in a third down and eight situation to give up a big first down to c let the drive continue. And then they wind up uh, scoring. But here, Josh Haldy. Just kind of fighting, moving around in the pocket, and right there, just nice air under the football. And P.J. Fleck, what concentration beats Jansen Patton over the top. But just a good job of concentrating on the football, looking it in, and then getting to the end zone. I don't know, I think instead of taking that time out, you have your mind made up already. You're going to need that timeout later. You should have already known that you're going for two, what play you got called if you get in the end zone. That timeout's going to be valuable later on in this ball game. Let me ask you this. Why would you go for two? Oh, that's, you're two or three scores down, and I don't really see the need to do it right now, knowing that, uh, that later you're going, to, you're going to have to do it anyway. But for the first time they've done that this season. Yeah. Here we go. Alden, incomplete. Keith Perry was the target. Penalty marker was down. Maybe a push against Bowling Green. So you get it close now. If Maybe it's Jelani against Bowling Ford Green, there. you turn Michael Turner loose if you're going to go for the uh, yeah. for the two-point conversion. That's about as good a play call as you can make if you're Northern Illinois this close to the goal line. Pass interference on defense, half the distance to the goal, retry the play. I think the only thing that Bowling Green has not done well today has been they've had some very key mistakes as far as penalties go. Right. You're right. It's an unopportune time that allowed drives, especially early in this second half, to continue for Northern Illinois. All right. Holly tries it again. The option. He'll keep it. And walks in for two. So maybe it was a good decision little second guessing they're not so bad after all it makes sense that's right they're officially back in this baby Harris needs 85 yards for the record can he do it can the Falcons hang on we'll find out it really comes down to this as we get ready for the fourth quarter and it's six away but Northern Illinois Entertains any hopes of winning today. They got to stop. Got to stop. Yeah, got to stop Bowling Green this offense at some point and a few times. Magner takes the kick by Azar. Hit hard. Short of the 25-yard line. Let's go to Matt Weiner for an update. Matt. All right, back to that Miami-Kent State game. Back come the Red Hawks. Ben Roethlisberger to Martin Nance. 
10 catches, 180 plus yards, and three touchdowns on the game. Miami leads by 11. Good Miami team. They really are solid. A lot of costumes today. Halloween. Many I'll of them swing. not so good. <laughs> First down for Josh Harris, 85 yards away from the all-time Bowling Green passing record. Hey, 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 and Harris complete for Cole Max. And Magner along the Northern Illinois sidelines gets 11. That's another first down. Move those chains. All right. Defense coordinator Scott Schaefer for Northern Illinois just had a, a rough, rough day of trying to contain Josh Harris. Well, just when you think you got a handle on it, he unleashes P.J. Pope, and when you try to stop him, it goes to Cole Magner. And they got a lot of different weapons, six players with over 40 yards of receiving. That is amazing. Really good play calling today, too, but when you have a quarterback this good as an offensive coordinator, it makes you look very good. That's right. He spreads it around. Here's the handoff, B.J. Lane. And Lane stumbles and falls, entertaining some thoughts of even more yardage. He gets eight. Rob Lee is there, holding up second, and about three. Well, here's just a little inside gift from the shotgun formation. He hits the hole, sees it, comes out of a tackle, continuing to fight for yardage. Good job by Bowling Green. That is the end of the third quarter. We are on to the final 15 minutes. Can the Huskies put on one of their vaunted rallies? We'll find out straight ahead. Don't miss Rebels haven't been 4-0 in the SEC since Archie Manning was playing in Oxford. Eli coming up at 7-15 here on ESPN2. Now, speaking of quarterbacks, Josh Harris, 405 yards in the afternoon, 22 of 35, three touchdowns, two pass interceptions as we begin the fourth quarter. Harris spinning away and doing a nice job not to lose any yardage. Vincent Reynolds is there. Great pressure from Leonard Cooksey from Harvey, Illinois, the nose tackle. It looked like he had him, but a great spin move by yeah, Harris it, to get it shows, away. shows that quickness in the pocket that athleticism enabled to, enables him to, to get by Cooksley right the initial the guy that shows the pressure and, and make positive yard and actually he lost a little bit but it could have been a lot more had he not been able to get away from it. Have a look at third down conversions for the Falcons. Six of ten today. Staring at third and four. Harris across the middle with caught first down. Charles Sharon. When in doubt, go to Charles Sharon. He has been the big man, seven yards. Well, he's a guy that I don't think Northern Illinois really accounted for coming into this game. Just a little inside move, a little slant move, get flat, get the first down, protect the football, and pick up the first down, move the chains. Boy, it seems like Josh Harris knows exactly what Northern Illinois is going to do, when they're going to bring the pressure. He goes to the receiver that's open, and they seem like they were always, all afternoon long, all game long picked up first downs when, when Northern Illinois blitzes. That's about 20 yards per catch for Sharon. And the handoff. B.J. Lang, and he gets two yards. The ESPN2 game track. And it's been dominated by Josh Harris. Through the air in the opening quarter. The Falcons have been in control from the first couple of minutes. Meanwhile, Northern Illinois trying to find a way. Balding. And he finds his target, P.J. Fleck. And now they've got to stop Harris. As the clock becomes a big factor, down 34-18 here. Setting up the screen, D.J. Lane. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now. All right, guys, in the SEC, it's Tennessee in need of a big win at Alabama. Fourth and two, Shaud Williams having a big day, but gets nothing there from the Vols. Bama gets the ball back. Brody Croyle looking to make something happen, and he does. Big gainer. And Bama now inside the Vols, 10 with five minutes left to go. 
we've had both of those teams this year. We had Alabama's opener, and then we had Tennessee. I like Brody Coyle as a uh, he, He's going to be a fine yeah. player. He's going to be a good quarterback down there in the SEC. 4-17. 7 of 11 on third down conversions. Here comes the blitz. Harris in trouble. He gets rid of it. It's complete. What a fine throw as Cole Magner makes the catch. All right, you, you wonder. We ask me, you really think he's going to play on Sundays? <laughs> I think he's going to play on Sunday. There's not a lot of guys that can make that move. Make a guy miss. Jason Hawkins misses him. Watch this pocket presence. Right here, they blitz. He makes a guy miss him. And then the presence in mind, get the ball up and out. I know exactly where my receivers are in the pattern, where the blitz has come from. All I got to do is pull it up and throw it. And, man, what a way to compete. That is competing at the highest level right there. Watching him play reminds me of another Mac quarterback, Byron Leftwich at Marshall last year. Same kind of great touch and great presence. Going long, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And overshoots his man, Derek Lett. But that's his measuring stick. It's funny you mention that. Byron Leftwich, whenever they want to get him going and says, well, Byron would have done it this way, you know, kind of, it gets his attention. That is his measuring stick in terms of how he measures his performance from week to week. Take a look at how they rank in the MAC. Third in total offense, passing yards per game, fourth mass efficiency. He's got 428 yards in the air right now. And a whole quarter in front of him. Here's Harris. And hit by Brian Atkinson, the beast. He gets about three. I, I don't know if I'd send him through the middle as valuable a player as he is. <laughs> well, let P.J. Pope or B.J. Lane do that dirty work. Well, I'll tell you what, it's second down and long, and it's a, a good play call because it gets you in, an, in a situation in terms of down and distance where you can convert. You don't want to waste it down. Now you take it, you get three yards, you get it to a manageable situation. A third down and seven, they can pick up the first down, run a lot of plays on third and seven. Tenth play of the drive coming up, and that, that's the real killer for Northern yeah. Illinois. And the pitch beating the clock away. Setting up the screen. A lot of orange shirts in front of him, but excellent defense. B.J. Lane is hit by Brian Atkinson, who fought his way through the offensive line. For Bowling Green, he gets three. Yeah, they came into this game, Bowling Green, 48% in terms of converting third downs, and that is off the charts in terms of success. A lot of coaches shoot for around right about 40, 41, 42%. 48 is magnificent. Looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down and five. What do you think of that? Came to win. <laughs> That's what I think. You, you come in here to win. Uh, you, you convert this one, and, and wow, you chewed up a lot of clock and taken a lot of steam out of Northern Illinois. Harris. And a diving grab made by Derek Lett. No, it's incomplete. He had it. And couldn't, couldn't haul it in. Couldn't bring it in. I mean, he had it, and a well-thrown ball to the outside, away from the defender. Watch this. Things break down a little bit. No one's open. Wants to go up top. Scrambles out and around. And right outside, away from the defender. And let loses it as he's going down. But boy, what a well-thrown ball. Out and away. Reaction from Harris. <laughs> Man, I'm back here fighting. Come on, just nice. grab that one. And we are well on our way. Got over 400 yards. Take it easy. Here comes Halde, and it's deflected and complete. Go to Matt yeah. Weiner for an update in the I'm SEC. Ready. All right, back to that Tennessee-Alabama game. We showed you Crimson Tide driving. Ray Hudson punches it in. Vols have never lost three straight under Phil Fulmer, but they trail with four minutes to go. I watched the Tennessee-Georgia game. An astonishing game to see the way the ball just kind of fell apart in the second half. Boy, it really has been. You know, the last two or three weeks for them have just been... They look terrible, believe Yeah, they really, to say it the least, they have looked terrible. Second down. Haldy, and it's incomplete. Good defensive coverage for Bowling Green. 
trying to get the ball to carry. And a nice job by Jason Morton. He's out of Columbus, Ohio. Pretty good football town. Senior. Hit Hewitt as well. Hit Hewitt, he's an interesting story. That, uh, against Ohio State had 13 tackles in a fumble recovery for Bowling Green and that uh, that lost to Ohio State, but just all over the place. My Michael Turner just basically has been turned into a blocker because he's just blocking for Josh Haldy now. Can't get him to football. Hadn't had any success running the ball. Third and 10. And batted down by Keon Newsom. And he was coming through on the blitz. And that brings up fourth down. We talked about Cole Magner. Helping out the basketball team, so did Keon Newsom. Went over and helped the basketball team uh, last year, played 17 games for Bowling Green's uh, round ball team. Keon from Decatur, Georgia, which nestled right next to the line. High snap, and Gallagher gets rid of it. Here is Sharon. Sharon takes a wicked hit at midfield, but good field position for the Falcons, a 30-yard punt, nine-yard return. Coming up, Josh Harris, a little quarterback talk about decision-making with a guy who knows a little bit about quarterbacking, our Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. Back in Bowling Green, in a game that has been dominated by Josh Harris. First down at the 49-yard line of Northern Illinois on top 34-18. Here's Harris. Spun out of bounds. Some of the Huskies. Hensborough, the left cornerback, came up. And made the hit. Boy, when he's not doing it through the air, he's doing it on the ground with his legs. And well, what a fine athlete. 6'3", 238 pounds, can move around, good pocket presence, passing 21 of 26 of 41, 431 yards, and then rushing another 13 carries for 82 yards. That's, I'll say that's doing it. That's doing oh, it. Oh, well, <laughs> that that's is doing, doing it. Second and one. Harris again. And again, a first down. And the great decision-making of Josh Harris has dominated this game. Here he is with Andre Ware. Josh, take us through your progression in the passing game. All right, on my first couple steps back, I'm going to read the corner. If the corner sits down, I'm going to look at the safety. If he stays on the hash, then I'm going to throw the, co the corner out over the corner's head. If he moves off of the hash, I'm going to come back to the middle of the field where we have a guy running out in the middle of the field. If all that breaks down, if all that breaks down we're running. Yes, run for another first down. He's done a fabulous job of doing all that. <laughs> doing it all. Bowling Green has 28 first downs in the ball game. Northern Illinois has 11. From the 37, first down. And P.J. Pope runs into Jason Hawkins. He gets three. It'll bring up second and seven. Clock running at 8.54 left in the ball game. The MAC has a guarantee to play in the GMAC. Motor City Bowl, and then a lot of talk about BCS Bowls, all of that kind of flying out the window here. Better hurry up. <laughs> Northern Illinois, eight and a half minutes. Are you a proponent of the BCS or not? Uh, I, I, well, you know, I, I, I am not. You know, I'll go on record as to say I am not with it. I think it uh, penalizes kids and programs for success schedules that... Uh, are made years in advance. You know, strength of schedule is one that uh, that certainly uh, I'm not in agreement with. You, know, you take away the margin of victory, and so you give the smaller schools like a Northern Illinois basically no chance to uh, to play their way into a BCS game because of strength of schedule. Then there's no way to offset it because they uh, they've taken away the margin of victory well, out Northern, of the moment. Yeah, and Northern Illinois has been very healthy for college football. Yeah. Great Cinderella story. Really Everybody's have. plugged in. Except Bowling Green. <laughs> Third and five. Here comes the blitz. Harris gets rid of it. And this time too long for Charles Sharon. That's the headline of the second half. But an incompletion. Maybe one too many moves by Charles Sharon. 
just going to run a simple slant route, get inside is all is his job, and he gives a little bit too much of a move there at the end and throws the timing off between he and Josh Harris. So fourth and five, and we'll see Nate Fry. <laughs> He's only punted the ball once today, a 35-yarder. Nearby kind of Finley, Ohio. Probably a little stiff. A little, <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little cool out here today, tonight. Yeah, with, with that offense, one of the best jobs. That's right, being a punter. Every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Coming after it. High floating spiral. It goes into the end zone for a touchback. Come out to the 20-yard line. That's where Northern Illinois will take over. Trailing 34-18. They've come back in six of seven games this season. But the clock, now their enemy. ESPN 2's College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Wendy's new homestyle chicken strips. Another reason it's better here. In the heart of Mac country, Bowling Green, Ohio, where it's been tough going for Northern Illinois against Josh Harris. who has a career mark in total yards of 518. And Josh Hawley now trying to rally his team here in the fourth quarter. And almost intercepted in and out of the hands at about the 40-yard line by Jansen Patton, who already has two interceptions. Here's Matt Weiner for an update. All right, Jeff, let's take a look at the top of the Pac-10, Washington State, at home against Oregon State. It's Jonathan Smith. Short but gutty touchdown run. Cougars up 7-0. Win today would set up a showdown at USC. The Trojans win big over Washington 43-23. They'll take on Washington State and SoCal next week. Here at second and ten. They're holding. And it is intercepted by Jansen Patton. Is it? Yes. His third pass interception of the ball game. You know, I don't know what you gotta do to prove it <laughs> to stop going at that guy. But boy, has he played. Heck of a ball game defensively for Bowling Green. From Stone Mountain, Georgia, his father played in the NFL for the Atlanta Falcons. Watch him just, Josh Holdy trying to make a play. But Jansen Patton right there with a the receiver, P.J. Fleck, and he just goes up and just battles him for the football right there, catches the ball with his hands. He'd make a pretty good receiver. <laughs> Always thinking uh, offensively. Only player in school history with three interceptions in three separate games. It's way to come. Unbelievable. On first down, DJ Pope. Just wonder at what point do you stop throwing it? A chance. Heck of a player, senior, six foot, 180 pounds. Came into the game with four interceptions. Gonna leave with seven, six in the last two games. Unbelievable. Good football player there, Jeff. Good, fine football player. Another interception. Rest of the Mac. <laughs> leave him alone the rest of the year. <laughs> Second down. To the 35-yard line is P.J. Pope. Keel Grant on the tackle for the Huskies. Uh, well, it's been that kind of afternoon, almost yeah. from the very outset. It was a Bowling Green Falcon team in total control offensively and defensively. Yeah, sometimes teams have a successful season going, then all of a sudden, it seems like it happens to everyone. You just hope that you can weather the storm. There's always one game in the season or on the schedule where you just can't run well, you can't throw it well, defensive, you don't have the answers. And that's what it seemed like, that's what seems to it happened to Northern Illinois here in this ball game. Third down, Harris. And he will be short of the first down. Brought down a pod by Martin Wilson. You know what, if I'm gonna run that play, Omar Jacobs is gonna come in <laughs> and run that one. Get Josh, get him out of there. Well, we'll take a break. 34-18, Bowling Green in charge, and with the ball. Oh, it's just about bedtime. 
<laughs> Go Bowling Green is the champ. On fourth down, here's Nate Fry. Maybe very good. And it skips out of bounds. Well, Patton has been the man defensively. Jansen Patton has three pass interceptions. Here you see the recovery speed he makes. Goes up and catches the ball at its highest point. And then here, just running the pass pattern with P.J. Fleck. Then the last one here, just staying in coverage. A long comeback route going up, battling for the football. What an afternoon for Jansen Patton. 18 career interceptions, second in school history. All Mac performer last year. And will be again this year. On first down, here's Hall. Firing, and it's complete across the middle, caught by P.J. Flack. And Flack down at the 25-yard line. He gets 15. That's enough for a first down tackle by Mitch Hewitt, who has the hamstring pull, but he hasn't... Uh, Really been slowed down by that this afternoon. Yeah, they go immediately into their two-minute offense, trying to generate some points as quickly as they possibly can. Not managing the clock very well. Sort of huddled up. A little confusion, perhaps. <laughs> huddle. Holly in trouble. Being chased. Caught by P.J. Fleck, who makes the grab. He gets six yards. They're late penalty late, marker. Yeah, late hit out of bounds. They're going to add about 15 more onto this catch. Got out of bounds, stopped the clock, and get 15 more free yards. It's really fun doing a football game here. It is. Good atmosphere. In most, it really is. most stadiums around the country, we are so far removed from the fans, be it in the <laughs> NFL stadiums or, or... We can reach out and shake hands. Right? We have people here during That's the right. break asking for Dead scores. Ball, personal foul, late hit on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. Here you see P.J. Fleck just continuing to work for Josh Haldy, and then the late hit right there out of bounds. Had about 15 more on to it. And behind his receiver, David McDermott. We're going to second down. Monday night countdown previews ABC's Monday night football game. Up to the minute NFL news. Stuart Scott, Tom Jackson, Ron Jaworski, Michael Irvin, and Chris Mortensen. And the Sunday night football coming up. The Bills and the Chiefs, 830 Eastern. That's those AFC teams. It'll be a good football game. Got Travis Henry back a couple of weeks ago, Buffalo, and able to run the football, Drew Bledsoe. I thought the Chiefs were in trouble there. I mean, I Tim Brown so. not getting into the end zone. That's right, I mean, last week. That's Monday night. Here's Halde, and it's incomplete. Looking for Powers. Boy, they have just removed Michael Turner from this football game. I mean, just really hadn't heard from him in quite some time. I think other teams will take a look at this oh, tape. Of course, you, know, you keep a bunch of guys around the, the line of scrimmage, make Josh Haldy. And, and, and you know what? A lot of other teams that will try it won't have the success because they will be in tune to what they're trying to do. But it's just one of those games for Northern Illinois. It happens every year to teams where you just can't, you just don't understand why you can't move the football. Third down. It is caught at the 48-yard line by P.J. Flack, who takes a big hit from Mitch Hewitt. He gets only three yards. So fourth down, they will go for it. The okay. clock running at 4.34 left. Need to get to the 44. Penalty markers. Maybe a hold here. Came from the line judge. It was eyeing the receiver as he was going up the field. Oh, a motion penalty. Big, big down there for uh, Bowling Green. Illegal motion on the offense. That's why he was. That's why he was eyeing the receiver. 
That's why he had his eyes on it. It's going to be a big time in Bowling Green tonight. You know what? Just, just being around campus and the fans, and you, there was a, a quiet calmness on the players yesterday. Josh, Josh Harris, who just knew he, you knew you got the sense that he was ready to play to come out and have a huge ball game. And uh, you sprinkle that in with the revenge factor of last season. And boy, got something special with this Bowling Green football team. And Harris. Hey, what? That play I do not like at this point in the ball game. Just give it to the running back. You know, they once when they were in the red zone, they lined up Josh Harris out wide and snapped it to uh, P.J. Pope. You want to run that play, do it that way, but I certainly don't gamble with uh, the health of Josh Harris at this point in the ball game. We were in the football offices of Bowling Green yesterday, and they have these very cramped quarters underneath the stands. Yeah. And, and some of these places we go into, it's the states, for the foot, you know. <laughs> and it's right. For the football players, it's very different here. And, and the great passion that they play with here in right. Bowling Green and in Northern Illinois. It's great to be around. B.J. Lane uh, knocked out of bounds by Keel Grant. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Matt, all yours. All right, we got a good one down south between Tennessee and Alabama. Northern Illinois looks, knows a little bit about winning at Alabama and Tennessee trying to follow suit. Casey Fawson and Mark Jones fights it off down to the ones. We've got first and goal. They're going to pound it with the run. Nope. Play action. Casey Fawson, Troy Fleming. But we are tied up with time running out. Bama has the ball back. Right, Tennessee just won't go away. Fleming, a former quarterback. How about this in terms wow. of total yards? That is just outstanding right there. 613 yards to 227 for Northern Illinois. 34. And the catch made by Magner, who has the first down. He gets seven yards. Here's Jimmy Dodge downstairs. Hey, guys, yesterday we talked to Bowling Green's defensive coordinator, Tim Beck, when he said the game plan coming in was to rotate in eight or nine different defensive linemen throughout the entire football game to have fresh legs in the fourth quarter. He felt like it was important against Northern Illinois and Michael the Burner turner It worked to perfection for them in this football game. It really did. They wanted to stop Michael Turner first and foremost and force Josh Aldi into a situation where he had to win the football game. They did that. They made Northern Illinois one-dimensional. They were only throwing the football, and they just have not had much success doing so. Turner, 18 carries, 87 yards. And there's the handoff to B.J. Lane. From Fort Washington, Maryland, Ken West, the right end, there on the hit. Tonight ESPN and ESPN2, some SEC matchups in prime time, 7.15 on ESPN2, Ole Miss and number 20 Arkansas, and then on ESPN at 7.45, number 21 Auburn taking on number 9 LSU. Some great SEC action coming your way, Arkansas and Ole Miss straight ahead here on ESPN2. Yeah, stay tuned for that one, that's going to be one heck of a football game. Great fun to watch. Having him in the Independence Bowl last year. Handoff is DJ Lane. Hit by Quince Holman. Just a dejected look on that young man's face. Five rushes in the second half, only 39 yards. Bowling Green, they had a plan and it worked to perfection. So the undefeated season for Northern Illinois is coming to an end. But what a great football season. It has been and it will be. There's yeah, plenty of oh, football yeah. effort. Got a lot in store for them the rest of the season. Boy, they ran into a buzzsaw here at Bowling Green. The pitch. The first down, B.J. Lane. Bowling Green is rolling as they have almost from their opening series. Field there. One, the running game, if it's not P.J. Pope, it's B.J. Lane. Good option pitch here to B.J. Lane outside the stiff arm, and then he's going to stay in bounds, keep that clock moving. 
you're going to play running back here, you've got to be either a PJ, a BJ, or <laughs> the initial, right? <laughs> That's right. 30th first down for Bowling Green in the football game. And that is the old victory formation. So Bowling Green in the West, thinking about maybe a MAC championship here. 2003, their 11th straight home victory at Joint Perry Stadium. They are a force, an offensive force led by the terrific quarterback Josh Harris. What a game. I don't know if I've watched a quarterback as good as Josh Harris all season long. I mean, really, I'm thoroughly impressed with him and had eyes on a lot of them around the country. Uh, he's played extremely well today. You have to go back to Byron Leftwich last season for a comparison. Look at the Mac West standings. Bowling Green now undefeated in conference play, the only one in the West. How about Josh Harris? 27 and 43, 438, three touchdowns, two pass interceptions, and that is the final. 34 18 Falcons over the Huskies. All Bowling Green. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Andre Ware and Jimmy Dykes, I'm Jeff Hollinger. The summaries and stats of this game, log on to ESPN.com. You're home for college football on the Internet. Let's go to Matt Weiner in our studio as the celebration is underway in Bowling Green. All right, Jeff, it's going to be a big night in Bowling Green. Matt Jones coming off a career-best 299 yards passing against Florida last week. He's got Ole Miss and the Rebels. Big game in the SEC West coming up just moments from now. We'll get you out to kick off in just a bit. Bowling Green defeats Northern Illinois, so now just three unbeatens around the country. The Huskies want to settle for their best start since 1956, but they move to 7-1 and one on the season. Get